What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Engadget Podcast live stream. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar, and I'm joined with, uh, all the way in the other end, reviews editor Sherlyn Lowe, and sandwiched in the middle, our podcast producer Ben Elman. Hey, folks. Yeah, I can. Good just morning. Point in both directions. It's a, I don't yeah, it's a different the order space, every right, time. Page left. It's fun. Hello, welcome. We'll be chatting about Microsoft Surface stuff today. We'll be chatting about iPhone 13 reviews and the iPad stuff that Sherlyn has been killing herself to do, and uh, yeah. And we'll start in a bit. Uh, say hello to the chat room. Hello, everybody. Dom Larry was here Jimin early. Chong. Yep. Yes. Dom Larry. Dude named Charlie. Juan Anon. Chris Angelo Perez. Hello, everybody. Oh, one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. or, Good you know, evening. Or one from of our Manila, regulars. Now. Says Chris. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Dom Larry is from Australia. Good day. Uh, yeah. Thank cool. you for joining us, y'all. Ruin Dig, 11 p.m. Yeah, region. 7 11 in uh, the Philippines. Mm -hmm. What? They actually have the best 7 Elevens across Asia. Wait, better than. Uh, I've uh, heard yeah. really good things about Japanese yeah. 7 Eleven for what it's all. Reason. I mean, yeah. Sherlyn knows. It's just. It's 7 Elevens all. Thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, the Singapore 7 Elevens are like pretty basic, but the. the Thai, you guys are, are you talking about food. the Taiwan ones? Yeah, the Taiwan ones, the Japan well, ones, it's like same deal, apparently. So yeah, yeah. it's just convenience store culture is a yeah. little different over there, I think. You guys don't have um, pre-made food, like the nice pre-made food in Singapore, like you do in Taiwan. Uh, we do, we do, but okay. but it depends. Like we have this thing that I miss very much. Do you know uh, roti, right? In mm -hmm. Singapore, we call it roti prata in mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, actually, and then it's, it's wrapped around like yeah, a yeah. 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 Um. Uh, in Singapore, we wrap it around like a sausage around a like a frankfurter or How whatever. How dare you? What? And then you just oh, so and then they fry it. Oh, so good. That's like making a hot dog egg roll. How dare you? That's yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's like but actually that would probably be pretty good. And wrapping yeah. it around, yeah, it's like a pig in a blanket, but with protein. It's so good. So anyway, that. like yeah, the the one thing, one of the many things I loved about doing Taiwan and Computex is that yeah, we get this crazy, sometimes crazy good food just straight out of yeah Seven Eleven and their equivalents because they have like <laughs> real chicken and stuff, and then they like heat it up in the back. It's crazy. Yeah, all the dim sum too with the little box. The um. Uh, yeah, we've got peanut air. Peanut yep. air says that it's 11 p.m. It, it just it feels very funny to me because to mm -hmm. me I'm like, oh, this is a morning show. This is, uh, I mean, because oh, it's, it's all over the it's place. U.S. East yeah. Coast morning, but no, we are someone's late night entertainment. Oh, know, worldwide. Maybe, absolutely. Maybe we should have uh, like <laughs> up and coming comedians on or something. When we do, um, when I do 9 p.m. live streams, uh, I get people from like from Australia. And then it's like 12 p.m. there. Oh, yeah. So. It's got to be like midday for them. There. Love it. Love it. What's up, Sherlyn? Uh, Jonathan Tran Henrico Magnifico. Ice Cream D is from the UK. And Jonathan Anderson, one of our familiar names, too, is here. Steven, yeah, uh, are all saying hi. And Chris Angelo Perez asks us to spill all the tea for the Microsoft event. Uh, we will. Yeah, no, that's that's good enough actually, to we're going to get today. to the actual episode. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. And also, we're do a little I have any mooncake? I do have a lot of mooncake. So, yes. Sherlyn so. always says mooncake. Come always on. it's actually always yes, it's, it's you got to keep a stock of it uh we so will start with our surface stuff folks and then uh, we'll move on to iphone reviews valentina valentina paladino will be joining us for that so let's try to get on to surface um as usual we'll be recording the podcast we cannot chat with you we'll see your comments probably and ben will take notes uh but we can't really comment directly to the chat we'll do some q a in between segments so keep an eye out for that okie dokie Let's get right into it and let me make sure my recording looks good. Hello. Yes. Okay. Let's kick it off in three, two, one. What's up, Internet? And welcome back to the Engadget podcast. I'm senior editor Devinder Hardwar. And reviews editor Sherlyn Lowe. And this week, hardware season is in full swing. Not only do we have iPhone 13 reviews and we have some stuff on the new iPads, Microsoft held their big event and they released like eight products, uh, most of which are actually really interesting. Uh, there are some that aren't, and we'll talk about all that. <laughs> so yeah, join us as we dive into the fall gadget season. Oh, as boy. always, if you're enjoying the Engadget podcast, please be sure to like. Let me do that again, not like. As always, if you're enjoying the Engadget podcast, please be sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes. That's always super helpful. You can also drop us an email at podcast at Engadget.com. 
We typically record a live stream around 10 a.m. Eastern on Thursday, so you can join us for that on the Engadget YouTube channel. We do some Q&A during that, too, so that's always a fun time. Check us out. <clears throat> so, Sherlyn, let's, let's talk about one of my favorite times of the year, which is not actually iPhone season. It is when Microsoft tries really, really hard to make us care about what they're doing because everybody loves iPhones. Everybody loves what mm -hmm. Apple is. Microsoft has to try harder, and I always find that interesting. This week, they showed off the rest of their, basically their new Surface line. We have a Duo 2. Uh, we have a sense of what Microsoft is doing, and I think overall it's all pretty interesting. Uh, but you were there doing hands-on mm -hmm. things. What is you know your first impression of this entire new product line? We've got the Duo 2, the Pro 8, the Laptop Studio, and uh, you know a bunch of other stuff that's less important. Yeah, I uh, was coming off of f having the first of my iPhone reviews go up that morning. So I think that it was <laughs> uh, just really hard to kind of focus. It's a busy time. On, on yeah. One yeah, it is. And and to your point, too, when you say that, like, yeah, maybe Microsoft has to try really hard. Um, the Surface event usually is in October, right? Mm -hmm. And they've moved it up this year to September. So that didn't help. But um I feel like people do get excited about surfaces. There is, a, I, there is I quite don't know. A, it depends. <laughs> I, I guess we run in very, very different circles. Um, but anyway, when I got there and, and when I was, you know, kind of uh, looking at all the materials we got uh, before I got there, just to make sense of what I want to mm -hmm. glob onto first, right? I think the first mm -hmm. thing I was like, okay, Duo 2, I have to check that out, right? And then... Your baby, yeah. Yeah, it is, it is the thing that... I, I mean, I reviewed last year. In addition, it's also like the most interesting product that that you know, just on the surface, that's <laughs> surface mm -hmm. that Microsoft uh, makes. And uh, however, when I got there, you know, I think the laptop studio was like, the more I learned about it, the more I was like, yeah. oh, this that is That one's actually unique. It's very new for them. Yeah. Yeah. And so what it is, is though, I don't know if uh, this was made clear in the press materials or the keynote, but the, the Surface Studio, the Surface Studio, the laptop studio uh -huh. is uh, going to replace the laptop book. Yes. The laptop book, Surface book. Yeah. They, they said Where, this is the, the book of all, basically. There was a line like yeah. that during the presentation. Yeah. Which basically where we've complained a lot on this show about how the Surface Book's design really was holding it back. And yep. now Google, Microsoft has found a way <laughs> To, to, to try to like mitigate that it's yeah. decided to not make it detachable anymore it's got this pull forward screen that's a uh, easel style you can have it sit in front of the keyboard closer to you you right. can flip it all the way around to face out you can bring it all the way down to be a tablet um and uh, in person my i love i mean i liked it it was really mm -hmm. really it's sharp unique. yeah oh my gosh yes we've seen a lot of um Laptops like this before, not to not to say that like Microsoft is the first to do this, right? Like Acer has been doing this in its Easel branded laptops for a long time. It's, it's different HP. though. Yeah. So yeah, the the thing it reminded me the most of is the HP Folio, that leather mm -hmm. HP tablet. Uh, I've seen people comment on my story too, saying like some Sony BIOS were doing this even mm. like oh, more than five years ago. The idea, just to visualize it, uh, normally it looks like a normal tablet, but you could pull the screen forward laptop and you kind of like it. yeah. Um, you pull the screen forward and it kind of like goes over the keyboard. So you can almost like place it right in front of the keyboard for like presentations and stuff. If you pull it all the way forward, it goes down at an angle. So it becomes a, basically like an easel. So you could do some like really good pen action with that. It's not, they're not really selling it as a big tablet as they did with the Surface Book, which I think is good because to refresh the, uh, the problem with the Surface Book was that all the hardware was behind the screen. So when I reviewed the mm -hmm. Surface Book 3 last year, I was like, oh, this is a really nice piece of hardware. They, they, you know, the, the GPU, the dedicated GPU, which is in the keyboard base, is getting better and better. But the core CPU behind that thing was surprisingly slow and underpowered because it had to be behind a very thin screen. And Microsoft just couldn't design around that. Like that was a that was an impending roadblock that would happen from when they started the Surface Book Three. I think looking back at it now, that thing is so crazy over engineered. It has that crazy hinge where it's like even even just like closing that thing is a problem, right? Because the Surface Book creates this loop and things can fall through it. Mm. And it doesn't fit flat yep. in the bag. It's just like it is a mess. It is like it almost feels like design uh, product design run amok. 
uh, because I, I've talked to some Surface Book owners. Most people returned that thing because it was really tough to work with. Um, mm. I don't know anybody who owns one and kept it who actually uses it as a detachable tablet or even you know flips the screen around. Like It's too much trouble. This thing is just like, okay, it's it's a notebook. And when you feel like it, you pull the screen forward and you pull yeah. it down. That's it. Like There's no detaching. There's no waiting for your operating system to be ready to dock with your external display. There's none of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um so it's a lot simpler in that respect and uh yes again though let's talk about the design of this thing because it looks weird not only is the screen weird the um the like base of it is weird yeah because there's a little lip it, thing yeah there's a little lip it looks like it looks like two tablets stacked together <laughs> basically it is a weird like a smaller one on top of a bigger one right yeah. exactly i don't know how comfortable that is gonna be like on your lap if you're actually using this thing it is also weird, like just looking at the hardware. Um, once again, it maxes out with a quad core chip. It's Intel's 11th gen H series uh -huh. 35 watt CPU. So a faster chip, but not like the fast H series that are in gaming laptops. And that is a surprising thing. Like that's a limitation that most other bigger ultra portables, like the 15 inches out there, don't have at all. So again, a weird thing to I... see Microsoft do. Yeah. I, I will say that this design, from mm -hmm. what I, my guess would be, is that, like, they wanted to have a place to accommodate the new pen. And we can talk about the pen in a little sure, bit. But sure. it, mm -hmm. it, they wanted, I think, not only just a place to accommodate the pen, but to have it sit flush. Uh, the pen attaches to this laptop studio with uh, magnets, and it just kind of slides into that little slot yeah. underneath and then the right pen will the lay screen. flush yeah. right exactly mm -hmm. below the keyboard actually and then uh -huh. and then they will lay flush with um uh the rest of the base which is the protru protruding part that we're talking about where there's like two laptops uh two tablets stuck together right so mm -hmm. i i feel like that's part of the reason that this this the style and the design that microsoft adopted the other i think i i see some vents along the way so i don't know sure. if like it made sense thermally for them to do this. Um, it's it's but, weird. Yeah. yeah. They could have done the pen like, thing yeah. and still have a more powerful processor. Like I'm looking, we were looking at the XPS 13 last year that had a six core <laughs> CPU, you know, like we're, we're looking at the yeah. laptops that are fitting in like razor blades with the eight core super powerful Intel chips. And it's like, what are you doing, Microsoft? You're If this is the most powerful surface ever and I can go get a razor blade that has an eight core CPU that yeah. is marginally heavier. Like I, I think another thing they did is they limited themselves to making this thing four pounds as, uh, at the maximum. So mm. it has a 14.4 inch screen. Um, the base model is like 3.8 pounds, I believe. And the like highest end model is a straight four pounds. So again, uh so I, I will yep. say when I was there, like I didn't really lift it up to use on my lap exactly. a lot. So I didn't really think about that using on your lap format, right? And and mm -hmm. I, I'm sure that with the thing with the design issue that you mentioned up, it, it would definitely feel a little wobbly or or uncomfortable on on your lap on your person. And I yeah, definitely kind of. I don't know how heavy it was already. I I tend to think of the book as kind of a heftier machine anyway. So well, the studio as a yeah. replacement probably it should be okay if it was somewhat heavy well i'm i'm saying i don't they shouldn't have limited themselves to four pounds right because right, that, right that's what it looks like whereas competitors like the razor blade go up to like four and a half at this point or at least almost mm -hmm. four and a half if you're buying a powerhouse notebook i think you've resigned yourself to being like okay this is gonna be a little heavier than you know a macbook air and that's fine yeah. because i'm getting all the power i need that's not necessarily the case with the mm -hmm. surface studio with the surface laptop studio Yes. Uh, which is weird because if somebody wants a thin and light surface, they've got options. They've got the new Pro 8. They've got the Surface Laptop, which is still around. And we'll probably get some like chip refreshes soon. Um, yeah. There are other options out there. I feel like they, they could have like gone a little harder on the power here. Another thing I'll mention is that um, the screen of the Laptop Studio is really interesting because it is a 120 hertz display. That mm -hmm. is tech. We've only seen on gaming laptops. We haven't seen this on productivity machines yet. And I do mm -hmm. think it's the future. Like we've talked about this when it comes yep. to phones and it's on the new uh, iPhone Pro. High refresh rates look smoother. It's, it's, yeah, that's yeah. it. Like it's objectively yeah. a better looking, smoother looking experience. Yeah. So to support 120 Wait, so hertz, yep. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I mean, I mean, we can get back to this because I think I feel like 120 hertz is going to keep coming up yes. uh, throughout this yes. episode. Yeah, but uh, the the thing to your point, Devendra, you you sent me a very good question to ask the people at the store uh, when uh, at the store at the event when at I was the event, yeah. The, the laptop studio and uh this doesn't do adaptive refresh mm. rates either it's not adjusting on its own to see hey if you're scrolling we'll bump it up hey if you're you know inking and, and drawing uh we'll bump it up and then drop it back down to a more battery efficient level uh otherwise this is just constantly at 120 hertz unless you turn it to 60 right. hertz yourself so like when you know you're at the airport you know and you want more juice you have to be it's smart really enough to go into your window settings and it's not even yeah. like an immediate thing right you have to Right click on your desktop, go to display settings, go to more display settings, go down to the little Dropbox, find the little Hertz and check it there. So it's like a three level in menu option, I think. And they say in all the marketing, it's gonna be 60 Hertz by default. So I think this is almost so, like 4 TVs. A lot of people are gonna buy this and not even know they have this power. Yeah. So the 60 Hertz default, I don't know necessarily where you saw it, what the person, it's the product all the, manager the at the event. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. What the product manager told me at the event and what I've written in my hands on. So I just mm -hmm. want to make sure we're on the same page is that like sure. a, um, the 60 hertz default is for the Surface Pro 8, which also has 120 hertz capability, but out of the box, it comes at 60 hertz. Whereas according to this product manager I spoke to, the mm -hmm. studio comes out of the box with 120 hertz um, yeah. at, as the default. That's good. So we'll, we'll have to check with Microsoft just to make yeah. sure they're also on the same page. You know what I mean? Um, there should be an easier way to change that. I, I think that's the right, ultimate thing. That's yeah. like a quick button, maybe, or or just adaptive. Give us an adaptive option. Um, I mm, yeah, I think they're in a weird place because one of the new interesting things coming to Windows 11 yeah. is adaptive sync. So it's like if you have a higher hertz display, the OS just does it. Like if you're scrolling, it's like okay, boom, higher refresh rate. Yeah. If you're just staring at an article, lowers it to say battery life. Like you shouldn't have right. to think about it. That's how more modern machines and smartphones, I think, are doing it too. Smartphones mostly. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. So hey, we're gonna need to see more of that. But it's pretty cool that this has 120 hertz. It's also a Dolby Vision HDR screen, which again mm -hmm. we've seen that on some computers, but we haven't seen Dolby Vision plus high refresh rate. Uh, I mm -hmm. think it's gonna be a beautiful looking screen it did um, and it did look yeah. really really good so i'll tell you yeah. what i managed to do at my hands-on uh, and we can use this to kind of a segue into talking about the sure. new slim pen too uh i am no artist i will admit i have no drawing <laughs> skills whatsoever but i was able to work on a watercolor um piece that was already done sort of halfway through about uh, with some purple petals and flowers and like the watercolor effect on that screen mm. holy crap it felt like i was i mean okay you you this is where 120 hertz refresh rates shine where like mm -hmm. the second i kind of just dipped the, the the pen onto the screen it really felt like water was just dissipating out of the nib it felt like things were flowing like i was truly drawing like on right. water and paper i don't want to be too hyperbolic here i i you know haven't compared this watercolor experience with another device so maybe i'm just blown away by apps yeah. <laughs> i was using it's, adobe fresco to be clear yeah it's a combination of a bunch of things too because they're talking about that high refresh rate which is again it's gonna be on the pro 8 and we'll get to that yep. um not only for scroll scrolling but writing Art. drawing on yes. the screen will make it seem more organic it'll feel more realistic yes. and the slim pen 2 which we're kind of hinting at is also yes. cool because it's slimmer than before and it has haptic feedback. So you kind of get that <laughs> yes. that resistance and that feeling of putting pen to paper and pencil to paper or something. <laughs> which is, okay, that, that's I, I'm I was, down with that. Yeah, I was so weirded out by this pen when I first started using it on this uh -huh. laptop studio because I was like, it's supposed to mimic pen and paper, but then like it sort of felt like a weird draggy thing. Mm. Like it felt like it dragged mm. and wasn't that. I don't know if I was just having the nip at too sharp of an angle to the yeah. screen. Um, and the haptic feedback is cool. If only when like like every time I I pushed it onto the screen and and the water, like I said, the paint would you know dissipate out. There was this slight vibration, like no, but cool. it doesn't. Real pens don't vibrate when you. But like a real paintbrush doesn't vibrate when you're doing it water doesn't vibrate pressure. but you really... you feel something you feel resistance and maybe right. they have to fine tune that um they do have to fine tune that you can I adjust really, the intensity i mean i really like the idea off. of this mm -hmm. pen too like it looks cool it is 130 dollars, so that's extra <laughs> and now you're into the surface world where all the really cool accessories are extra um so you know there there is that there's a lot of stuff we're going to be keeping an eye on um Anything else you want to mention about the Surface Studio while we're at it? 
I, I yeah one last note is that the screen mm -hmm. is ridiculously thin it's very thin and uh it, it was easy to maneuver but maybe a bit too easy like at some point it was a little wobbly um on mm -hmm. with the screen on its on its frame sort of hinged so we'll yeah. see we'll see in person how it does i mean not in person but when we're you know using it in the real world mm -hmm. so the surface laptop studio is also going to start at 1600 dollars, which puts it like in the price range of powerful 15 inch computers uh mm -hmm. still much less than the the macbook pro 16 inch <laughs> which has ninth gen intel cpus and still starts at like 2400 dollars. so they gotta they gotta update that bad boy um as much as i like that computer <laughs> let's move on to the surface pro 8 which i think it is the like it is the quintessential surface this is the one with the kickstand this is the one with the keyboard accessory it is a tablet that transforms yeah. into a pc with all this stuff and i think it is a a nice shift forward um Design wise, like I, this is the biggest Surface redesign since the uh, the Surface uh, the Surface Pro three, and we're not mm -hmm. going to count the Pro X. We'll talk about that separately. But it did bring in mm -hmm. some design elements from the Pro X, right? It has yes. thinner bezels along the sides. Yep. Uh, the top and the bottom of the screen still a little chunky, but the sides look right. a lot better. The screen is bigger; it's thirteen mm -hmm. inches, and it also supports one hundred twenty hertz Dolby Vision, just like the, mm -hmm. uh, the laptop studio. So. That is really interesting to have a tablet that has all that great screen tech. It's very iPad Pro-like. So I kind of see what Microsoft is aiming at here. Um, mm -hmm. And it also finally has Thunderbolt displays, which yes. the uh, the laptop studio has as well. So Thunderbolt ports. So before last year, not last year, two years ago, when you reviewed the Pro 8, uh, the Pro 7 Trillin, it had USB-C. You could charge over mm -hmm. USB-C but you couldn't plug in Thunderbolt devices because yeah. it just didn't have the technology. This is yeah. the first time Microsoft is finally embracing it, which means you can plug in really fast hard drives. You could plug in multiple 4K monitors. Um, yeah, up to also two. external <laughs> GPUs. Yeah, up to two, which is, yeah. that yeah. okay, that's pretty cool from a single For, tiny I, device. I only have two mm -hmm. eyes, I'm good, yeah. <laughs> you're good, you're good. Um, <laughs> also supports external GPUs. So if anybody has those things, I do feel like, the dream of external GPUs has died, but it's still a thing that exists and is out there. So if you have an enclosure and you want like some real power, you could plug into this. Um, it looks like a nice surface. I didn't. How did it feel to you compared to the Pro Seven? I, when I uh, picked it up, I was expecting it to be to feel a lot like the Pro X, the Snapdragon arm, well, the ARM-based Pro X, and uh, it it was actually though surprisingly heavier to the point where I was like questioning myself. I was like, yeah, wait, why yeah. is this so much it heavier? Is heavier. Is it, is it, it is heavier yeah. than the Pro Seven was, yeah. Um, specifically, I think because it it has to you know accommodate like battery and and, and you know the require the power necessary to keep the intel cards running and then its ventilation system is built differently from the uh, pro x which was the arm based one that i'm is, talking is about is the size of it like the size of it, there's more glass too i think that's the biggest thing if the that's screen is bigger part of it probably, there's more yeah. glass so yeah yeah i i so i was able to put a surface 7 plus and the surface pro 8 uh, sorry mm -hmm. yeah next to each other and like you you can see the screen is bigger the, the size of it is not that much different um, just again, shaving bezels will do that for you. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, it look, the, it doesn't feel huge and it, it really feels very sleek. And then the vent, like it's the vents dream. along the edges are, are, are different from the mm -hmm. pro X as well. So the, and the, the kickstand was also like super extra thin. Right. But like in the same way that the pro X had a thin kickstand, I think this is still very sturdy. Mm -hmm. It's, it's all down to the performance now, really. And, sure, and there's sure. something that requires testing. I think the ultimate thing looking at this and looking at the specs, it does seem like um, that I think this is a Surface Pro that can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with like an actual ultra portable laptop. Whereas before they had like 12.4 inch screens, they were a little mm. smaller, they were a little limited in terms of what you were getting. Would you get an XPS 13 or a Surface Pro 7? The vast majority so, of people will just get an XPS 13. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. yeah. This and is a 13 sorry. screen, it has everything, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. I was just thinking. I, I, when you said XPS thirteen, this reminded me when, when we were talking about the studio too. I had the same thought. I, when yep. I get a laptop, just use it in laptop mode. Sure. Um, but for something like the Surface Pro uh, eight, you know, it's 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 something more purpose built for like on the go. I feel like this is that's my like airport machine. If if I you know deemed it something extra, or I had the had the means to get something extra. Um, mm -hmm. That that's what I would take with me when I'm traveling. But a, a laptop like this, the laptop studio is less less for me. You know what I mean? Like it's mm -hmm. I don't need my desktop 
<laughs> substitute thing. Why not? To, to Why not? Do, do that. It would be nice, sure, to have mm-hmm. the screen come forward and watch TV and TV. Watch if, videos and play games on. Imagine working on the plane and how annoying working on a plane I'm not is take on the, the train. studio on the plane, oh, the though, because it's so heavy. It's four it's pounds. Heavy. Four pounds. The it's Pro 8. Tell me how much the Pro can, 8 weighs. If you could take a. The Pro 8 weighs uh, exactly two pounds on its own. But the, the keyboard. Pounds, the keyboard usually adds like another full pound. So it's going to be like two. It's going to be almost three pounds. Um, and yeah. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Valentina is here for our iPhone section. Hello, Valentina. Ooh. We are just going to be a couple minutes late because we're going to wrap up all the Surface stuff. So yeah. give us a couple minutes. Um, let me just. Okay, so we we're, were at saying. Pro 8. Yeah. We're at Pro 8. Talking about the weight of the Pro yeah. 8. Yeah. So the thing is, and the reason I think it's a better machine for more people is just because that screen is finally 13 inches. It finally has Thunderbolt. It does everything yes, yes. what you'd want a 13 inch ultra portable to do. So it's at least yeah. a good option. Maybe like here, the Surface was never meant for everybody. Um, I do think for your workflow, Sherlyn, like given when we were traveling, when we were moving around, being able to be more flexible and have something that's more than just a laptop um, mm-hmm. or something that could be simplified to being all screen would actually be really mm-hmm. useful. Uh, but hey, it's hard to visualize that when we're all still pretty much stuck at home and not traveling too much. Um, so all in all, I think the uh, the Surface Pro 8 looks really cool um it is a nice update like is the update i've wanted for a very long time has slightly better cameras the keyboard is still separate so even though it starts at eleven hundred dollars expect to spend another 100 to 150 depending on the type of keyboard there is a charging keyboard too um the pro type cover uh but that is yeah the signature that is the most expensive and you have to buy that cover and you have to spend another 150 dollars for the pen Yep. So all extra costs because it's how Microsoft rolls. Ticker shock, y'all. Yep. Um, yep. Before, I know there's a lot more uh, from the Surface event. I did want to highlight two Let's more do, things. But Duo, yeah, we yeah. talked about the Duo 2. Yeah, the Duo 2 is so interesting as just a device and as a concept. It's funny to me that they're already on the second generation of the Duo, but the Neo sure. is still nowhere to be seen, right? <laughs> But... They said so, and we we've talked about this with people. They said like we're not working on the Neo anymore. Like yeah. they they said like it's paused. So I don't know what that means. If we'll see it next year, if we'll see Ever, it eventually, yeah. or right. maybe what they need to do is like keep designing and just release what would be the second version of the Neo. Because yeah. looking at the Duo Two now, you, you, this looks well, a lot better than so, last year's phone. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> the main difference sis here right are uh first of all i think this is the biggest difference is that like now it's got a triple rear camera system um as like in the past it only had one i believe 10 or 11 megapixel camera on board and you you were supposed to use that as both your front and rear yeah. camera it was above and the display it was yeah not great. on the yeah. inside it was on the inside it was above the display and the main issue with this is that like microsoft thought his software would be smart well it thought it's software and android software right will be smart enough to know like which side of the camera or which side of the screen it would need to turn on based on how you were holding and using the device or the camera and that was i think the cause of all the the issues it was having with the camera software it was just really buggy never knew which camera to have out so this time around it's got both like front and rear cameras except for this bump holy mackerel like <laughs> what the hell it's about it's, as thick as the phone it's a it's big like, bump. it's a big bump yeah this is okay so you know how we have a scale on this show yeah. this is a chonky bump this is the chonkiest <laughs> bump uh especially compared I could, to I, the, if you stuff this into like a pair of jeans i could see that bump keeping it's gonna get jammed on like that little like mm-hmm. metal dot that's on all our jean pockets for some oh reason Lord. yeah it's gonna be a mess yeah so so that that also uh makes it so that you can't really just flip the um the two screens all the way around so that they're all facing outwards you can still do that but mm-hmm. then you can't have it lay flat and flush against each other which mm-hmm. is like a, uh, I guess a minor annoyance to some people, but B, it just removes from me completely any credibility this thing had as a phone. Mm-hmm. Um, to use a camera too, you you can also no longer do it like that way, where you can flip it all the way around to have it like as a as a um, phone sized camera thing. Sure. Uh, you have to have the rear camera unobstructed, right? So you can't open it more than 180 degrees because otherwise you start seeing the back of the other screen, and then. So you basically have to have the two screens open. 
they need to give you a basically like the way the iPhone can let you take a photo right from the lock screen. Like they need to give you a way yeah. to just like take photos without even opening it. So good luck. Yeah, there, but there's a lot of usability had, they yeah. didn't think about here. That's why that's why without an external display, this is one of the challenges. This is why the full mm -hmm. three and, and and stuff like that, like they have an external display. But again, I I I, I don't ever want to see anyone take a photo with the duo two out in the wild holding it up like a tablet because I will feel very bad for you that you drop fifteen hundred dollars on this device only to look like you're taking photos Listen, with an iPad people... mini. People love to take photos with their tablets. Come on. Uh, a couple other good things. This one has a modern processor, finally. The Snapdragon yes. 888 has, um, I think, uh, the camera, like, if having multiple cameras is just going to be the big thing. It also has, like, this little notification bar for when yep. it's closed, which is very Samsung. That's very Galaxy Edge, but it is a cool thing to see, like, underneath the hinge there. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't show it to me at the event, so I completely didn't. They, they kept telling me, they were like, oh, so we like made the inside edge of the screen curve a little bit more. It's more beveled. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. cool. I nice, guess that's nice. the point. But yeah. then now and then and then they were like, oh, this is a notifications glance bar or whatever. So based on the videos I saw, I didn't see this and I didn't get to see this in person because like it, they didn't tell me about it. Um, but it, it basically is a very, very teeny tiny sliver of screen that peeks out from the between the yeah. two screens under the hinge. Like and the page, it, like the the one line of screen you get in an old pager, yeah. like an LED, like okay. Oh yeah. Alert, even, alert. Even shorter something. than that, even. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it, it will flash colors sure to show you something's <laughs> going on when you have the screens uh, when the device closed, but it'll also like show some icons, right? I don't know mm -hmm. how useful the icon thing part of it is gonna be. Uh, I can't. My eyesight's really, really not that great. I don't, uh, I don't know. It looks like um, <laughs> like the Cylon imagery from Battlestar Galactica, which I like. I grew up watching yeah. Knight Rider, so give me, give me my LEDs in a single line that move back and forth. Uh, that's when you know, it like when the, when the cool. machine takeover begins, all your surface <laughs> will start flashing red. So, you could get ready for that. Um, all in yes, all, though, yes. I think this is a better one. Um, I could see people buying this one. It is expensive, starting at fifteen hundred bucks, but. Most most like crazy high level phones now. The iPhone the iPhone Pro uh, Pro Max is going to get you close to there too. If you want the a foldable of some kind, this is basically a foldable without actual screens that fold. So it is still nice in that respect. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I, I I am cautiously I, I'm going to cautiously <laughs> like be saying that you're, I don't think people are going to buy this still because like I need to see what the software is like first yep. because that was yep. the biggest issue with the original you know like a lot of the supposed functions for a multi-screen device like this just didn't work very well you should, you should talk to um, Jess you should talk to our Jessica Condit no, I uh, have, I have, because I have. <laughs> we were talking about this uh on the post stream and Jess is really into getting the duo she, too yeah we had a little chat after I was like girl calm down no. calm down <laughs> calm down like, relax Okay, let's. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna have to move on to iPhone stuff soon, but let's quickly round out because I think the rest of the stuff is just kind of uh, hilarious almost. So they didn't update the Pro X at mm -hmm. all. The Pro X, which mm -hmm. was like two years ago, was even three. No, it was two years ago. That was like the design forward surface, the one built on ARM, thinner bezels, thinner like overall case. Um, it is still using the SQ2 processor they developed last year that was thrown into it, and there is now a cheaper model. Which is nice. It starts at eight ninety nine, mm. but nothing else is different. I think we're all waiting to see how Windows eleven will kind of work on this thing because the idea is that um, it will have built in software emulation for x sixty four, so it can run any Windows app. Technically, we'll see. The original Surface Pro X did not do that, and it was a nightmare to use because of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh huh. And there, there is are, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm just moving on. I'm moving down the line. There's also a Go new ahead. Go 3, which is their, you know, cheap boy, the cheap small boy. And I think it's going to replace like the base surface line. It starts at 400 bucks uh, with like, you know, an underpowered CPU. Again, keyboard is separate. So that's another $100. But for kids or for people who don't need like a giant tablet, um, it's not a bad, it's not a bad deal. Yeah. Like a, a yeah. four to $500 PC that also turns into a tablet that can be used with a kickstand that has a lot of good mm -hmm. tech. Um, I've, I've always liked the Surface line, the Surface Go line. The Go 2 that I reviewed last year was really solid. So I imagine it's just going to be more and more of the good stuff. Um, they also announced the Surface Adaptive Kit, which is a really cool thing where for people who, you know, disabled users who have 
basically uh, want help finding particular keys or finding particular ports. Like these are translucent stickers, transparent stickers that could be put on there to help you figure out the keys. Uh, there are port recognition um, stickers and cable ties that can be color coordinated okay. to help you figure it out. There are ways to open up the surface, uh, things that give you more leverage, like a ring that you can pull um, or like a pull tab to pull out the surface kickstand. I think that's all super cool. And it's a big step towards usability. And I know you like you care a lot about this, Sherlyn. Yeah, I, I, I definitely wanted to give time to kind of recognize that uh... Microsoft did announce this. It's not the like they're not the first, obviously, to make like stickers mm -hmm. to turn any laptop more in touch friendly, especially for visually impaired people who want to feel out mm -hmm. the keyboard and don't really, you know, feel enough with the existing nibs on keyboards, the little nubs that are already there. And then also, like I, I just want to say because we've interviewed Microsoft's Chief Accessibility Officer Jenny Lay Flurry a couple of times now, mm -hmm. it feels like because they have someone who at the helm who's like herself very thoughtful about these things yep. this is why microsoft is is sort of leading the way a little bit with things like this the adaptive kit and the adaptive uh xbox adaptive controller um so i i, I am glad that a company as big as microsoft is giving accessibility the attention it deserves and hopefully mm -hmm. and apple too in some ways but hopefully more companies mm -hmm. Make a bigger effort like this. That's, yeah, Microsoft has a whole <laughs> division focused on accessibility and usability um, for all sorts of users. So I think mm -hmm. that's not something we see at most companies. We don't know the price of this thing yet. I hope it is cheap. I hope it's like 20 bucks yeah, at the to, most yeah. because it has to be price accessible as well as everything yep. else. So mm -hmm. please don't make this $50, Microsoft, um, because we're, we're already paying way too much for those Surface keyboards. Yeah. We can cut it here. Uh, let's, and um, we'll do a Q and A combined after iPhone. Yep. Valentina, are yeah. you good? Are you prepped? Oh, okay. So we're going straight Valentina's into prepping. iPhone. Yep. Yeah, we, I think so. Can you guys hear me? Oh. Yes, yeah, I, can I can hear you. you. Um, Hello. Just, just let me know when you want me to start recording. Yeah, start uh, recording please start. now. Yeah. Please start. Yeah. All right. You want to sync again, Ben? Uh, yeah, we don't need to do, um, quite silence. so much. So, yeah, we don't need to do quite so much silence. Let's try to get five seconds or something. But okay. yeah, so let's clap in like in a couple seconds then. Okay. Valentina. Sure. So Valentina, just let us know when you're ready. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm recording on my end. Cool. Okay. So stream, you're seeing how the, the show is made <laughs> as we always talk about. It's uh, glamorous, super mm -hmm. put together. Okay. So resync in three, two, one. Okay, try it again. Three, two, one. It's always going to be a little delayed, so <laughs> we, we will survive. Okay, yeah, I will. Speeds, yeah. Well, yeah, the, yeah. The problem was that Valentina didn't do it at all. <laughs> I was like, "Am I supposed to do it, or do yes. should I just follow your lead?" I don't know. We didn't give you clear instructions. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Students. just clap. Just clap. Uh, okay, I will intro you and. We will get going. Uh, and yeah, this is all you, Sherlyn, mainly because you you know all the Apple stuff that you want to oh, talk cool. about. Okay. All right. Microsoft's done. Let's move on to <laughs> all of our Apple stuff. And to help us chat about it is our commerce editor, Valentina Palladino. Hello, Valentina. Hi, guys. How are you guys Hello. doing? Hello. You sound excited already. I am excited. You, you, you I am. reviewed the iPad mini. You're as pumped as Sherlyn is about yes. uh, oh this review hell. Super pumped. We're living oh in. My God. Oh, Poor boy. Valentina. So we have... First, yeah, she 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 stepped up and helped out with the iPad Mini because uh, I mean, there's just so much stuff going on. Valentina is also at the same time reviewing the Fitbit Charge Five for us, mm -hmm. um, which yes, she's going to do a really great job testing that out. I'm I'm so grateful. I don't have to wear that goddamn thing to sleep. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's not that bad. It's not that bad. You'd be surprised. It's, it's not that. It's not. It's small. It looks good, but the thing yeah. I, don't, I don't want to wear anything to be. <laughs> I get anyway, it. I get it. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so iPhone and iPad reviews are all up. Basically ours, uh, my, my pro reviews are coming very soon. Our iPad nine reviews also coming very soon. We just needed time. We have, you know, people need to take breaks. Um, but yes, I started out with the iPhone 13 and 13 mini and Valentina, I don't know how you feel about, I you're an iPhone user. I, yes, I, I, yes, think, I am. Yes. So you're on a fairly recent iPhone as well. So for me, the question going into the review was, is this a worthwhile upgrade? And if so, for who? Like for an iPhone 12 sure. person or an iPhone 11 person? I also wanted to make sure I compared it fairly to existing devices in Android. Um, so that's yeah. a lot to get into in one review. But 
uh, I tried. Hopefully, hopefully that comes across. I think you did a great job. I think you did Aww. a great job. Yeah. I promise sure. I wasn't fishing. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Yeah, so, so what would your like vel from from a point of view of person who's like been using the iPhone like a recent iPhone? What would your most like important question be about the iPhone 13 and 13 mini? Well, I guess I mean as like you said, as someone who does use an iPhone and yeah. I have an iPhone 10 R. So I am a little bit, mm. you know, I have a, I have, I'm like due, due for an update, I guess, or yeah. like yeah. what people might think is due for an update. Um, but it's only, yeah. I think three years old at this point, um, in December when I got it. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, that's my biggest question would be like, should, is this enough of an update to yeah. warrant me yeah. spending possibly what $800 or more yeah. um, and which one is the best one to go with versus um, the regular 13 series or the pro series. I know we yeah. haven't gotten into a pro review just yet. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's from my perspective because that me as a real world user, I was yep, considering yep. updating and getting a new iPhone um, mm -hmm. and I have my thoughts on that, but yeah, that's, that's the question I would pose to you is like for someone like me who is running on an older iPhone. Yes. Older. older yes. Um, <laughs> Is it worth the update? I I feel like the 10R, and I think Devinder is in a similar spot mm -hmm. because you've been considering getting one with for your wife. Uh, the iPhone. I already got so I got the 12 for my wife last year, and she's oh, okay. good. And there's no okay. Reason so you don't need you don't feel like okay. So yeah, yeah, I agree. For for people who are coming off of something as recent as the 12, you don't need the no. upgrade probably unless you're like really you really must have cinematic mode. This is one of the newest things mm -hmm. it's based it's contingent on the a15 processor so like older cameras can't just get it through an, a software update so like okay I, I i don't think your wife is going to be like cinematically taking videos of your daughter anytime She's soon not, i mean we take a lot of videos but she <laughs> she probably doesn't need that i think the conversation is different for pro users but we'll get there yeah yeah we'll get there i i, I definitely feel like people mm -hmm. valentina my advice to you would be to get the 13 pro but i will tell you why later yes um yes. Okay. but I, and i think we all agree in on this one so so as Six ninety nine, the mini um, is still kind of hard to recommend anyone buy, just because the battery life is still shorter than every other smartphone out there. Part, better mostly than before. Because that's nice. Better than before, yes. Mm -hmm. But mostly because it's so small. Like any device this small that's like got modern components, it's not going to last long enough. It's just that's kind of the way we are. Um, but the regular iPhone thirteen uh, that's a bit bigger. Uh, sorry, that has bigger cameras than before. It has yeah, slight bumps in photography. You you have a smaller notch, which like L O L <laughs> no. It's still there. It's still there. And it's pretty huge. Um, iOS 15 things you can get on basically any phone. As a jump from the 10R, Valentina, if you're trying to maybe save the 200 bucks difference from the iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, um, like it's still a good upgrade because it feels fresh mm -hmm. and new. And it's got the dual cameras because the 10R only has one. Um, and it's got decent battery life. Mm -hmm. But here's why. And I think that we... Yes. we we don't need to spend too much time on the on the 13 and 13 mini. You can go read my review. It's already up. Exhaustively covered everything. The reason we all should be getting the Pro if we're considering upgrading this year is the 120 hertz refresh rate. That's There's green, no... baby. Yeah. That's green. Like, I swear to God, I, I am at the point now where like, I'm so grateful I've moved on to the <laughs> iPhone 13 Pro reviews because I don't <laughs> need to use that shitty ass 60 hertz screen. <laughs> Wow. You know, like a like a yeah like a commoner no 60 hertz for you but this is <laughs> this is what i'm telling everybody like you look at a high refresh rate screen you're like oh my life is different now there is before mm. i saw this mm. screen and then there's after i saw this screen <laughs> and i need these screens so yes i i think yeah. i will a lot of people will agree with you Sherlyn. Val valentina let me pose this question to you how much sure. of your of your phone time do you think is spent scrolling let me just Oh, too questions. much, too much. Every right? Week, every week when I get that notification, that screen mm -hmm. time notification yes. of how many hours I've spent on my phone this week, I just like, I fall, I like crumple into At this all. like little, like, I feel so, I feel terrible about all the yeah. time that I'm like just scrolling mindlessly. Yeah. Um. So in that case, I guess screen time is working because it's guilting me yep. um, to <laughs> stop doing that. But yeah, I mean, the... The scrolling on a yes. screen that's better, like on the on the pros, is just I, I've experienced it with the iPhone. I mean, with the iPad Pros. So, like, I totally understand that. Mm -hmm. Yes, bringing that into your life in a in a smaller form, kind of smaller, um, yeah. with iPhones, uh, would definitely be an upgrade for sure. 
so so when I was thinking about I didn't want so I know that this is a new feature for people in Apple world right so that's why I was like look I can already imagine people going like what's the big deal but once well, I don't know why that's the voice if, I chose. if they have iPad pros or if they've seen any of that stuff that's sure, the one yeah, area where right. Apple has like really gone hard on screens yeah yeah yeah, might be. So I meant like Apple mm -hmm. phone world, iPhone world, yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, for those of us in the Android phone world, we've we've had this for years. We know what high refresh rates look like. But so, don't, so don't I act just like wanna... every Android phone had that. Not shirt. every. Come on. <laughs> it's only it's the only mid-range ones now. Some of the gaming ones, ones yeah. now have them. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> they've been around. They've been around to the point where they've we've been around. on cheaper phones. We've even got ninety hertz screens. You know what I mean? Like better mm -hmm. than. Not 120, but better than 60. Anyway, I, I wanted to make it clear why it's so important. So I think I spent a bunch of my review, which I yeah. filed, we're just going to put up tomorrow, um, explaining how much of my life is just scrolling. Just think about it. I'm just going, whether it's social feeds like Twitter or whatever, or your email, or when email. you're writing, or you're looking at your conversation history to be like, what did this bitch say about me? Or like, you know, it's just all, you all want of smooth, your smooth, like angry text. <laughs> Scrolling. Yeah. Uh, also, like I don't it's know. So important. I don't, I don't know if any games fully support this yet too, but I can imagine like some of the like faster yes. paced mobile games sure. will end up looking a lot better on that screen yes. too. But that's I, I wouldn't get it for games. I get it for the scrolling, and that's the other yes. thing too. Like if you're yes. if you want to be doing less doom scrolling in your life, maybe you'll want to make it look less <laughs> pretty. So I don't know. Yeah, it's Fire a philosophical beware. question. Yeah, yep. in that way. Uh, and, and you know, if you're doing things that require like uh, a lot of input, like 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 the Vindra said gaming, or even if you draw on your phone with your fingers mm -hmm. for something, you know, at some part, it's the 120 hertz screen is going to help make it feel a lot more fluid, a lot more natural. So anyway, I, I'm beating a dead horse here at this point. It's 120 hertz <laughs> screen, big deal. In fact, big like af after I, I'm so torn because like I'm going to, upgrade to the 13 as my main like um because i have to main two phones nowadays i've been maining the 12 and i want to main the 13 not the 13 pro because it's got the pink i got the pink one it's so nice uh, but this is disappointing but, this is really you know, disappointing here that yeah you get it's, the pro it, do the pro put a pink case on it and <laughs> be happy with the he's rest got of your a life. point he's got yeah. a point get the yeah. leather is there a pink leather case yet those leather cases are really uh, hot so. I'll, I'll the look, pink is I'll nice the pink is yeah. nice i got a I'll yeah that, i got a but, rosy you know. one yeah <laughs> the pink is very pretty i will say that about the iphone 13 but anyway Anyway, moving on to the rest of the Pro and Pro Max's features, the cameras, I mean, they, they seriously upgraded the hardware here. Apple uh, make, give, gave us bigger sensors. One of them uh, even has an F1.5 aperture, the main one, which is like huge. Mm -hmm. um, photo photography is great. I've compared the photos I took with um, the S21 Ultra with the Pros as well as the Pixel 5, which yeah. Apple does. I mean, Google didn't make a bigger one last year. Did you, um, did you do macro mode testing at all, Sherlyn? I did. That one, Apple... So I don't think Apple has really talked about that much, but for a lot of folks, <laughs> that like being able to go really good, big on like a small thing is going to be a big oh, I deal. I have for stories a lot of for yeah. you. Okay. Okay. So I I was so excited to try out macro mode. I've tried it out on the OnePlus, I think nine. I can't remember which exact uh, OnePlus model also added a macro mode. Uh, and it is hilarious to me that. Okay, so first of all, Apple does this thing where it doesn't like offer like a, a macro mode that you switch on and off, right? Mm -hmm. It just if you get it wants to be intuitive. So yeah. once You're you get close. close to your subject, yeah. we, right? When you get close, it will automatically switch over. So you will see actual on the UI the thing changes in front of oh. you, and then and then you it looks like you're shifting cameras basically, right? But then, like, it, it is buggy right now, and Apple has said it will issue a software update soon to fix this, but it constantly switches back and forth as, like, while you're getting close to your subject. So it's, like, doesn't mm. know, mm. like, what camera to use, sort of. So th that's one thing, and that's the thing that Apple said it will fix. I haven't seen the fix yet, so I can't tell you if it works really well. I will say when I am up close in macro mode... Uh, it also switches focus on things mm -hmm. because when you're in oh. a very busy background and like, for example, for my testing, I did a lot of like leaves on trees or whatever. It would focus on the right leaf that I wanted and then midway through just switch focus to the <laughs> one in behind it. I think this has to do with the fact that I was getting too close to my intended subject, right? It's only mm -hmm. for up to sure. two cm away, two centimeters, centimeters away. So once I started to get too Wait, close Wait, you were getting closer subject, than two centimeters away? Yeah, I was, I was all up in this bee's business, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. Uh, but all that said, when I was using it, when I did manage to snap the pictures from macro mode, good lord, were they beautiful. It didn't look great on my phone because I think 
their uh, the HEIC format just didn't save mm. in like very nice colors. But then when mm -hmm. I exported and uploaded them to Instagram or, or to just my photos uh, app on the phone, whole, holy crap, y'all, okay. I can see hairs okay. on leaves. It's very pretty. It's, it's all we need to see. Like, imagine living in a world where you could see all the hairs on your <laughs> Ant Man. <laughs> Ant Man, I'll see you. I you yeah. can't hide from me, Paul Rudd. Um. Anyway. Anyway, did you <laughs> play with cinematic mode too? Did yeah. you give that a shot? No. Yeah. Dude. So so Valentina, I, you can shoot all the best videos of your cat from now on uh -huh. in cinematic but mode. I'm always I looking shot... for the next way to, up, mm -hmm. to yes, level up my to cat up your level and videos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cinematic mode actually does look really great. It it does. It, when it, but but with a few caveats. One is that like I tested this on our video producer Brian O, who's you know a beautiful subject, and his adorable dog Zen. And um, the iPhone 13 was and the 13 Pro. They were both very good at like identifying subjects in the scene. They were, the the yellow boxes appeared, the white boxes appeared, mm -hmm. and it will keep focus on the on the area that it thinks you should focus on. And I did the same thing that they did in the um <laughs> announcement video where like you turn your head and move your eye like gaze away from the camera and it just starts to shift to the background, uh shift the focus to the background. All of that works fine. Mm -hmm. Um with the with just the fact like just like the intensity of the effect can be very weird if you have it like set to max aperture um so like the highest setting so like the mm -hmm. biggest opening to so f1 whatever uh f2 actually but but and and it's at that stage that like the you lose hairs on your like head or you lose like mm. an ear or you lose like a, a nose to the blur like apple is just like why well, no you don't need a nose it's just whatever you don't, you don't. and then Fine. yeah it's it's lost in the blur in the background. So so there's that. So like, but we found that uh, adjusting the f stop, which you can do uh, on cinematic mode, will lessen that. It's still not that great. It still feels like I think I saw one review say that it still feels like the early days of portrait mode photos, where like phones still weren't very smart at knowing what's your head and what's like background. Um, but when it works, it looks really nice. The other thing I struggle with with cinematic mode is that sometimes it just can't focus on two things at once, even if they're on the same plane. Mm -hmm. um, but this feels more like something Apple could fix and will fix uh, quickly enough. So yeah, no. Do I think cinematic mode alone is worth upgrading from the 12 to the 13? No. I, I personally don't think so. You can shoot great videos without it. It's limited uh, to 1080p 30 FPS, which FPS, is going to be a deal breaker totally. for some people. Because I do, mm -hmm. at this point, I'm doing everything 4K 60 because damn, I want, damn. I want, I want that like, nice baby footage, you know? And yeah. that would be the reason I would upgrade too, just to have like a better pro camera and to have like stuff like macro mode, yeah. other things, like other nice capabilities, less mm -hmm. so for cinematic mode, because you're kind of like, you have to do a project. You want to have a project in mind to do cinematic mode. You're not going to do like everyday yeah. kids running around videos in cinematic mode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I will say that using cinematic mode uh, made for some. I use iMovie to make some really silly videos uh, uh -huh. of Brian, his dog, and our friends as superheroes, uh, <laughs> and it's freaking amazing because you it somehow introduced this yeah professional quality to the video where mm -hmm. like I really the trailer came out looking like I really did shoot a tra trailer trailer yeah. video. So I can't wait to see nice. what kids do with this. Like just a kid having a phone that has I'm some really cool. <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, that has some really cool focus capabilities. Uh, there's that. So anything else you guys want to mention about the phones um, or the pros, Sherlyn? Because we got to get to the iPad mini, which yeah, I think I is totally... the, it's probably the most interesting device <laughs> Apple launched this year. So yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, no, I would say just like read our full reviews uh, or watch our full reviews. Uh, the, what, the any reviews coming out tomorrow. Any sense um, of battery life improvements? Uh, because I do. Sure. I was looking at a lot of reviews, and everyone was like, "Holy crap, this is like a major leap forward the, for batteries." The pros are insane. The pros okay. last so long that I I can't even run a battery test because they'll like it'll take me too long to run the test. Like wow. I need to use the phone, and like I can't have a phone just running a battery test for two days. To, like. <laughs> No, so we're going to have to go uh, live with our reviews soon, but tell you that like in anecdotal testing, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll test update with my uh -huh. battery test results soon. But yes, the Pro Max lasts forever and ever, but it's also bigger and heavier and has a, you know, I, I that's not the phone for me. Nope. If you want like something. I don't know who the ultimate. Pro Max is for. I, I still don't know it's because I, I've talked, I've talked to a lot of folks and even like bigger, taller people with huge yeah. hands. The Pro Max still weighs half a pound. I it's too heavy. It's too heavy. 
did that what, did, the, you, did the 13 like gain any weight from the from the 12 it did. is it a little bit heavier mm. yeah yes mm-hmm. it is okay um, my, my fiance the, has the 12 pro max and mm-hmm. he just yeah. loves it because he likes that to have that gigantic screen you know what i mean and the battery life that comes along with like yeah. the largest phone that you, you can get so you know what's a good alternative though maybe instead of a bigger iphone how about a smaller ipad <laughs> right yes what a segue <laughs> yes. Aye, aye, aye. go for it so yeah the ipad mini i mean this is the most significant update to the ipad mini we've seen in a very long time um you could say since it came out mm-hmm. if you really wanted to get a wow, little spicy okay. but certainly <laughs> I always since, want to get spicy. certainly since the um 2019 version came out that's for sure so that the 2019 version was kind of just like internal updates with the processor and stuff like that but this is a whole new redesign kind of looks like a mini ipad air you yeah, know it has yeah. the mm. what apple is calling an all screen design which you know is different it's a different name than the edge to edge screens on the pros um but essentially it's the same sort of design where you have this kind of black bezel you know curving all the way around the screen um and flat edges so and and Mm -hmm. because of that there's no physical home button obviously but there is um, one of those power buttons that the air has with uh, touch id on it so you have that form of logging in that biometric um authentication um and then some you know volume rockers and such uh but you don't have a headphone jack on this one and i bring that up because the 2019 mini did have a headphone jack so that is i think probably a small difference to most people But if you are considering updating from the 2019 mini, that's something that you're losing. So just this, be this is me throwing my hands up the air, just cursing Apple. Like, of course, you create this yeah. perfect little beautiful device and ruin it by <laughs> taking, t- taking away the three and a half millimeter jack. Um, and I'm sure there will still be people who are angry about that. But I think a lot of us, especially us who like kind of live our lives in this like tech world, kind of saw that coming, you know. Um, but mm. it is something that you will lose if you're updating from the 2019 mini, which is kind of a hard decision to make i think but we'll get into that um so yeah a totally updated design um it has you know the a15 bionic chip which makes it super fast um very zippy really great mm-hmm. to you know use as my daily driver over the past like week ish you know um mm-hmm. just when i'm sitting on the couch or you know kind of using it for everything that i was using my iphone for for the majority of the time that i've been using it um and then it also has we can't forget USB-C charging which is another really great <laughs> update finally oh, finally um yeah. 5G support, so you can kind of, you could technically kind of use this as a phone if you no. want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it, but listen, the the, the Samsung there. Note people are out there, and like they're they basically are. they're almost there. They're almost <laughs> they are. there. Exactly. So I mean, yeah. do what you want. Go off. You can do that. Um, and also, they have the iPad Mini has improved cameras. So there's a 12 megapixel rear camera, and then a 12 megapixel front facing camera. And that front facing camera has uh, Apple center stage feature. So when you're, you know, FaceTiming with someone, the camera kind of pans and zooms to track you and try to keep your face in the center of the frame. Mm -hmm. Um, And that was really cool. That's kind of one of my favorite newish features that Apple has, um, just because it makes FaceTime calls much better, I think. Um, For someone like me specifically, who is usually multitasking when I'm on a FaceTime call, because I'm usually FaceTiming with either a friend or like my mom or my dad or someone. And I'm usually like in my kitchen or like going around my apartment, like trying to clean stuff up or something. And uh, I'm usually moving all around the frame and sometimes out of frame. So yeah, it's cool to like kind of have it do that, you know, automatically without you having to pick up, pick up the actual, you know, tablet and move it around. And it works with the second generation Apple Pencil, which also for me, I am someone who really likes, you know, digital doodling and note taking Mm. and stuff like that. So it was really great to kind of use the iPad mini as a kind of digital notebook. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it really excels at that, particularly because of its size. Yeah. Mm. How does like how does it feel to hold? Does it feel more comfortable basically than having I don't know if you've tried out the old iPad Air? I would say they didn't upgrade the iPad Air. So mm-hmm. that's actually mm-hmm. a pretty bad purchase right now, given the power and given the capabilities that's in the iPad mini. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this seems like they just decided to shrink the air and assumed maybe a lot of people would jump on that. I'm really hyped about it just because of that. But could you like hold this thing for a while on the couch and, yeah. Bed and stuff? Yeah, I was actually surprised. I was able to kind of type with it. Actually, I have it right here. I can kind mm-hmm. of hold yeah. it up for you. So I've, I've actually been able to kind of type like this way more oh. easily than I thought. 
I was mm. going to be able to do. And, and for um, the listener, like this means like you're holding it with two hands, yeah, like a phone, like portrait as phone. If yeah. you're holding yeah. an yeah. iPhone or whatever mm-hmm. phone. So yeah, with your thumbs on the center mm-hmm. of the screen, essentially. So I was surprised by how easily I just kind of fell into doing that and treating it almost like a really big iPhone. Um, mm-hmm. So it is really nice to hold. And it is, I mean, I own an 11 inch iPad pro from 2020. So not the most mm. recent one, um, but the time before the model before that. And it's, Compared to that, it is so much easier to just kind of tote around my apartment. I can literally have like a YouTube video on and just kind of mm. go around doing my errands, cleaning things up. Um, and yeah, I was. it really became this probably the easiest iPad to take with me wherever I was going, whether it was outside my apartment or inside the apartment. It could. It was like my phone. It, just, yeah, it became yeah. a larger phone that came with me with my phone. <laughs> I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so tempted because it's sort of like, I've I've long dreamed of having like a little digital portfolio, you know, something bigger than my phone, but something that's not a laptop, right? If I take yes. my daughter to the park and she's out there playing and I just want to like type an email or something quickly, um, I could imagine getting this, uh, maybe eventually Logitech or somebody else will make like a keyboard case. So you can have like a nice little mm-hmm. keyboard next to it. Apple isn't making one, which mm-hmm. I think is very, very telling. Um, I would love to see a cute like fold out Apple keyboard on this thing. Um, but I feel like that might be a little bit too. I feel like that might be a little bit too small. Like I actually sure, think it, sure. it might be good that Apple's not making a keyboard yeah, case for yeah. this thing. I'm sure somebody else will eventually. Mm-hmm. But since it does have Bluetooth, you know, you could hook up. You could get one of Apple's yeah. like you know little smart folio cases, um, or just another case that allows you to mm-hmm. prop the mini up in front of you and then use like a regular Bluetooth keyboard, something compact, obviously, if mm-hmm. you want to take it with you. I think that might be the better option just for typing, purely because of the ergonomics of it you know yep 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 for sure uh i'm really excited about this thing anything else you want to mention valentina about it like it it starts at 499 the one yes. i kind of want would be the 256 gigabyte wi-fi mm-hmm. model so that's 650 mm-hmm. and 650. then you're like then you're getting up there and if you want the cellular yeah. then it's like more and more then it's a lot yeah it gets very expensive lot. very fast and that's kind of the disappointing part about the ipad mini i think number one that it starts off a hundred dollars more expensive than the previous ipad mini right um so that right there kind of makes the decision to upgrade if you have an older ipad mini a little bit more of a toss-up because are you willing to spend that extra hundred dollars just to get 64 gigabytes of storage which is another kind of con mm-hmm. in my opinion just because if you're going to use the iPad mini, like you said, Dev, kind of as like a mm-hmm. digital portfolio of sorts or something where you're going to keep kind of your digital life in terms of notes, documents, uh, even photos and videos sometimes, you know, like all of those things eat up space. And, you know, iPad OS is only going to take up, you know, more and more space as it becomes yeah. more robust. You're going to want so, games on this thing. You're going to want things that are big. Yeah, exactly. So the 64 gigabytes might get eaten up very quickly. Now, yeah. You know, bumping it up to 256, I kind of feel like that's the better option if you're going to go the digital notebook route. Um, or you could, you know, buy a USB-C capable external drive to take with you. But that's another that's thing. That's too much trouble. To, it's too no. much trouble. So most people, if they are, I think most people who are considering the iPad mini now know exactly what they want to do with it. So I mm-hmm. think they are probably going to be more willing to pay for the extra storage because they already have this kind of use case in mind. Um, and anybody I know that has loved the iPad mini in the past has owned them, um, is like loves this size, you know, like that's mm-hmm, one of the mm-hmm. points I made in this review is that it really mm-hmm. is all about this specific size of tablet, um, that kind of, uh, Apple has kind of carved out this niche, this niche where people just mm-hmm. love it. They really have like a special use cases <laughs> for it. Um, they love the portability of it and the power in this one with the A15 bionic processor is great. So it's like, just, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great small tablet and if you know that that kind of fills a hole in your life there's a very specific <laughs> 8.3 inch hole i bet in many your shapes life, you know? hole. i bet many shape hole. I, yeah. I i saw this thing i was like mm, that's very that's very cute it's that's tempting. very like yeah. i, yes. I kind of want it and just, just to like let's backtrack to the history of like how do we get to the ipad mini first of all in like 2012 2013 it was because there were a bunch of like seven inch android tablets and everyone's like the iPad's so hot, let's make it smaller. And mm-hmm. Samsung and a bunch of companies, I think it was Asus actually, like Asus had the ZenPad or one of those like out there for a while. It was like 200 bucks and they were really building up market share. And I think Apple was like, oh no, small tablets are in, we got to do something. So the original iPad mini, I think was a really cool thing back in 2012, but with the advent of the iPad Air and everything of the last few years, like it seemed like it didn't really have 
a place mm-hmm. in the like iPad landscape. Whereas now the mini is just like, yeah, it's a very specific it thing. Is, if you want a bigger mm-hmm. screen, you could get the air. Yeah. But it slower. is the yeah. best lap tablet at its size. I would mm-hmm. sure I'd wager yeah. to say, right? Like you, what yeah, else you got? The Kindle eight. H- no, well, I mean there, there. It, it really doesn't have much competition in terms of right. size in like a traditional right. tablet, right? Um, but I mean it does have, I guess, some competitions with e-readers, but that's a very different type of a device, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Totally different screen, totally different type of performance. Um, right. So that, I think, mm-hmm. that will appeal to another very specific type so, of user. For sure. um, so speaking of the different screen, right, can you tell me a little bit about the iPad mini screen? Because I, I our video producer, Julio, it's curious, like, it, is it wasn't there something like a complaint about the screen? <laughs> The complaint about the iPad mini screen. So the iPad mini screen on this one is a liquid mm-hmm. retina display, 8.3 inch okay. liquid retina oh. display. The 2019 the version was a 7.9 inch retina display. So it's a mm-hmm. little bit different. Um, mm-hmm. And from my understanding, the liquid kind of means that it's just like feels like it's the all screen design. Like that's kind of what it's right. referring to right. um, versus the old style of design that, you know, that the old iPad mini had. Mm. So it's a perfectly fine screen, but it's nothing like the 120 Hertz <laughs> screens that you're going to get on For iPad sure. Pros yeah. or like even the new iPhones or anything. It's just a very suitable screen. Don't, don't put it next okay. to your iPad Pro. Put, I've seen yeah. some yeah. I've seen some reviews where somebody was like taking a photo of like the iPad Pro and the Mini above it. And the Mini is like, uh, you see all the like blocky LCD backlighting and the colors aren't as good. And I was like, yeah, because you're comparing it to one of the best screens that you can yeah. buy on the market right now. So don't do that to yourself. It, yeah. How is the audio? Because we got a question from the chat room from Zach Yafau. Uh, how, how is the audio speaker? Is it good enough to just like listen to without headphones if you're watching a TV show or something? Yeah, I definitely think it's perfectly fine to listen to if you're watching Netflix or YouTube. Like that's mainly how I was using it um, for a lot of the time, like in, in when I was doing the review. Um, I will say that it was, I feel like the audio kind of skewed a little bit lower um mm. so it didn't yeah. it wasn't as loud maybe as i was expecting but then again i don't really know what i was expecting um but it's it's perfectly fine like if you are wanting if you want to watch netflix or something um and yeah i didn't really have a problem with it but i mean it you are able to connect uh wireless headphones obviously to it so mm-hmm. um it just depends on your preference in that in that case so i feel um, like that that's the big thing we we have to wrap at some point because i feel like we can <laughs> talk about all this stuff forever and want to be respectful of your time valentina uh Shirlin or valentina like do you guys have any thoughts about all these products overall or like ipad the new ipad os the new ios anything just make ipad mini fold that's uh that's the discourse <laughs> i've been you? seeing all over yeah but there you go that's i think my that's thing. i think that's kind of like what apple's looking at too they're like oh you like mm-hmm. this form factor huh how much do you mm-hmm. like this form factor mm-hmm. would mm-hmm. you like if you could fold it into your pocket huh huh yeah, I, I will just bring up one thing about iPad OS 15 along with the iPad mini was with my experience with the Apple Pencil. So mm. one of those new features in iPad OS 15 is that quick notes feature, um, which, you know, I don't use Apple notes as my main note taking kind of system. I mostly use Evernote, but this was super mm. cool. That you can just like kind of swipe up from the bottom right hand corner of the screen, either with your finger or with the Apple Pencil, and it'll bring up this little new note and you can just kind of scribble something in it um and it'll save it right into your apple notes and like i just found that super convenient um and Mm -hmm. a really great feature that like i feel like slowly over the years apple has been making its notes app way more convenient and kind of it it can compete more so with like a lot of the other note-taking apps out there particularly the ones that have you know like stylus support right Uh, so yeah that was that was a nice feature for me to use because i like taking notes with the apple pencil and also like doodling things out um so yeah and the apple pencil second generation apple pencil on the ipad mini i think is just as good as it is on any other ipad you just have a smaller space to work with so does it does it magnetically attach to the side of the screen it does it does and it fits literally like so perfectly on it's almost Mm -hmm. the exact same it's adorable it's adorable like it's an adorable little package you know Love it. Love it overall. Let's, uh, you know, we will have a lot more to say about Apple eventually. But while we have you, Valentina, and while you have that thing on your wrist, just want to quickly ask, like, how is how is the Fitbit Charge 5 working for you? It's been working fine. I think if the let's see if the screen will light up for me. There it goes. Oh, look at that. That's really nice. nice. It's a Uh nice screen. Um, The screen is probably the best 
like physical like hardware thing about it um because mm-hmm. compared to the charge 4 charge mm-hmm. 4 had like a grayscale oled display this is a full color display mm-hmm. um so that kind of makes the charge 5 feel more in line with all of the smart watches that fitbit has even though it's not mm-hmm. a smart watch this is like their main their main like expensive band you know because people still go for that sort of style um, mm-hmm. So it, it definitely elevates the Charge 5 in comparison to the Charge 4. So far, it's been a decent experience using the Charge 5. It's pretty similar to the Charge 4. There's not a whole ton mm-hmm. of new features. Um, there are a couple of new things. I think um, like Fitbit brought down the, uh, it, or they're going to bring down the ECG uh, measurement feature from some of the smartwatches. They're also mm-hmm. bringing down the EDA measurements and like stress mm. stress measurement um feature from some of the smartwatches um and yeah so i've been you know just working out with it over the past week ish um and so far i haven't run into a lot of huge hiccups or anything but you know this is this is 180 dollars the charge 5 180 dollars 30 dollars more than the charge 4 so that is a pretty significant uh price bump so Uh, yeah you'll just have to uh, i'll have to formulate all my thoughts and i'll put it in the review (laughs) coming soon to see like if you if it's really worth the update the upgrade from the charge 4 but so far it's a perfectly suitable Mm -hmm. fitness tracker i I think that screen is kind of the big thing because i remember seeing pictures of the charge 4 i was like this grayscale this grayscale screen is making me sad you know we're living in a world where like we have some really nice you know screens all over that can fit on wrist devices that Mm -hmm. seems like a big update for a lot of folks yeah yeah for sure and it's it's great to have it on this band kind of style because i feel like with smartwatches kind of taking things over you know taking over the wearable space over the past couple of years that bands kind of yeah are just like an afterthought but there are people who still want that style yeah. you know the people who find that just more comfortable a lot it's of a yeah. lower profile than this i will say the charge 5 is also just is a more lower it's a lower profile than the charge 4 it's got these kind mm. of curved edges and it's a little bit smaller like slimmer and stuff so it makes it easier to wear for sure than the charge 4 Good. Um, so yeah, awesome. no, uh, Shillin, it hasn't been as bad to wear it to sleep at night. I will say that. <laughs> That's Shillin good. Shillin nightmares I, about the charge no, four, as I recall. Yeah. yeah. Well, nightmares about not the charge. Four, it's about all <laughs> all wearables that I had to test for sleep, but I do it for yeah. my job anyway because I love you guys. I mean, no, I don't. I think... Is there really a wearable that's comfortable to wear to bed? I don't never. No, not there. So, there was. Yeah. There was back in the day with my beloved uh, Jawbone up. The Jawbone. The, the job, Jawbone. Yeah. Every was, every I, that, time. Yeah. Kids okay, these days, okay. these TikTok kids don't know anything about the job on up. Okay? I know. I just, I know. They're just like, what's that? <laughs> one last note on the Charge 5. I just want to point out that $180, and I appreciate that a good band is like a, you know, some people don't want smartwatch, but $180 for like about $20 more, you get the Watch Series 3, the Apple Watch Series 3. Yes. That's so, a bad to do that. I mean, that's a shit. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's not a, the best watch. It's not a great device. quite outdated. Yeah, like, I probably yeah. wouldn't it, recommend that. Worse for fitness. And, it just has a bigger screen. That's like the main benefit. So there, right? AKA, yeah, Apple should really just get rid of it already. But yes. I do still think that like the Charge 5 is quite expensive for what it is. It a is. lot of the bands mm-hmm. that I know are 150 and I'm sure there's better, like there's also cheaper options from like Garmin and, and other like fitness brands out there. Yeah, sure. yeah, there are. And I mean, it's it's just going to come down to if all the new features and the new design really mean that much to you. And also I mm. will say that at least a couple of the features that Fitbit kind of promoted with the charge five are coming soon and yeah. they're still coming soon so like i haven't been able to test out a couple of them because i can't you know yeah so yeah. that's another thing that i think is a bit of a bummer that's uh oh. yeah i hate that trend just because i guess it, yep. it's so hard to get updates out during the pandemic and everything well valentina i'm looking forward to reading the full fitbit charge five review that's gonna be coming soon uh thank you for chatting with us where can we find your work on the internet these days um, at Engadget, please come to the, to the Engadget website to read um, the reviews that we have, but also all of our, you know, deals coverage and our sales coverage cool. and all the buyer's guides that we have that are coming out. All the buyer's around, guides. All the buyer's yeah. guides, especially around the holidays. We will have a bunch of stuff coming out to help you decide, you know, <laughs> what you should buy if you are looking for tech gifts for your friends and family, um, all at Engadget. So. Oh, cool. Do people cool. also follow you on Twitter for all the deals? Yeah. Yes. Yes, at Valentina Lucia and also Engadget Deals specifically at Engadget <laughs> Deals for all of the deals. Follow Please. both, but follow Valentina's Twitter account because surely yes. she, she does more than just deals. She, uh, looking yes. in your background, Valentina, like all the yes. boxes, like I feel that pain. That is same that is all my the boxes. Pain right and I will yeah. say mm-hmm. they're not all my boxes. I do live with a fiance. So they are <laughs> some of his boxes as well, but I, I have to take credit for some of them, unfortunately. So many boxes. <laughs> Thank you, Valentina. We will chat with you next time. All right. Bye-bye. Wait, hang on.
Wait. Okay. Are okay. you yeah, want to stick around for Q and A, or do you yeah, want to? Do you need to chat, Valentine? Um, yeah. I can. Yeah, I can stick around if you want. Sure. You guys cool. want to chat a bit? Okay. Cool. Yes. Um, let's. let's keep that going. Chat room. We are open for questions. Okay. Yes, we are open for questions, and goodness, I've banked a lot of them. So many. Um, so many. So uh, I'm going to run to the bathroom. That... You guys, you guys get, cool. get started. Sure, we're here. Yep. yep. One of the ones that I thought was funniest was uh, Jonathan Anderson, one of our chat heroes, said, buy an, buy an iPad mini, put it in the enormous pocket of your Jinko jeans. <laughs> so they're basically it, the same way we were talking about how the iPad mini is basically the better iPhone 13 of this year. Um, if you wanted to use it as a phablet or something like that, yes. you would need equally large pants. You would. You Hence would. the turn of the 2000s, huge, huge pants. Uh, also uh, from the same user, Jonathan Anderson said that iPad mini is foldable, but just once. <laughs> That's true. true. And then and then all of your money goes down the drain. So. Mm -hmm. uh, so general question from the chat that uh, too many people asked all at the same time to say anything but the iphone 13 still doesn't come with a charger right you, you there is to... a cable not the brick yeah cable not the brick okay so let it be known that there is a cable uh, a lightning cable but not the brick and honestly like you could probably if you put something up on facebook someone would probably just give you a brick like the iPhone charger bricks are pretty uh, ubiquitous. Uh, yeah, and in this case, it's also by the way, I charged it. I plugged it into my um, the the thing for my MacBook, the brick for oh, the yeah. MacBook, because it's a C, it's a C out, a C in C out, yeah, C in Lightning out, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, C in Lightning out, yeah. Uh, and then we're getting back to um surface issues. Uh. So, like, uh, I think Ruin Dig says that, or or wonders, uh, does the Duo Two charge the Surface Slim Pen? Yeah, I believe it doesn't. It just magnetically goes. Uh, no, hang on, sorry. I think it does do C wireless charging of the pen. I, you know, let me go back and check. I'm like lose. I've, I can't, I'm sleep deprived. There's yeah, but there's there's also too much information. Uh, I know that the pen does attach to the Duo 2. I just forget offhand because they were like, yeah, there's like three different devices that the pen works with. So I'm like, which one is the one that charges it again? Let okay, me so pull during that, that, yeah, while Sherlyn is looking that up, I know something that Devendra can talk about, which is mm -hmm. uh, that Fred Donovan said that it, um, they really wanted the Surface Buds 2. We're looking forward to <laughs> announcements of uh -huh. Surface Buds 2 with a better uh -huh. fit. Sure. So, uh, just, it'd be uh, nice. It'd be nice. Uh, uh, I think. I think they realize like they they gotta like pick and choose like the things they're releasing. Um, it would be nice to see. I actually really liked um, the Surface headphones more uh, than the Surface Buds. I still have the Surface Buds around. And I try to put them on. There, it's just a really weird fit. Like remember when we were talking about the Surface Book being over engineered? I do feel like sometimes Microsoft goes so hard to be a little different <laughs> in the gadget space that. They kind of go off the deep end a little. Um, I like the Surface Buds, but I'll tell you, like the thing I keep coming back to is the AirPods Pro. Just like mm -hmm. either that or the Jabra's. So if you have one of the Jabra's around too, I would not wait for Microsoft to do better with the Surfaces because they also didn't really add much. Like the nice thing about the AirPods is that they connect to iPhones and Macs and iPads so easily. Um, you could share uh, AirPod. You could share AirPod streams and stuff too, which is really nice. So quick. Yeah. Sorry. Quick word yeah, on so the Slim Pen 2 charging. We'll go. Go. <laughs> no, just a Duo 2 does does charge the um the Slim Pen 2 wirelessly. Very cute. Oh, nice. Because otherwise that would be a huge pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to use it with that. Uh, so uh then there were a few people talking about eGPUs. Even though Devendra said that eGPU, like the dream of the EP. EGPU it's kind of dead, basically folks. dead. It's there were dead. a few people yeah. talking about how nice it would be to plug uh, the, um, I think it's, ooh, let, let yeah. me make sure that I get it right. I think it was the laptop studio. So like slide sure. the screen forward. Mar Mark Dell says slide the screen forward, uh, plug it into an eGPU, hook up a wireless controller. Ah, oh, yes. 
Oh, yes. Well, so one thing we didn't mention spec wise is that the, uh, the laptop studio has an NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti. Um, it's not like the full wattage version that's in most game that's in gaming laptops. Uh, I talked to Microsoft. They said it was like a 50 watt TDP. Basically, it's going to feel like a 1660, I think, or 1660 Ti. So you could play a lot of games in 1080p. How about that? I was able to play. I wasn't able to play with this one, but uh, with the XPS 15, which has the same GPU at even a lower wattage, it's at 45 watts. I was able to play Overwatch in 1440p above 70 FPS, you know? So, like, you could play a lot of games decently on a Surface Studio on its own. I think the big draw for all these things is Game Pass streaming uh, because at, at that point, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the hardware is behind your system. And they have so many games there. So this is why the eGPU is dead, everybody. Like, you're going to spend 200 to $300 for another box to plug in the $500 GPU. And because of the limitations of Thunderbolt, it's also not going to be as fast as if you just plugged it into your computer directly. Wait, like, so eGPU yeah. housing is $200? Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. Once people, like, once you start, like, looking beyond the theory of having a nice eGPU e box, like, the practice of it is really difficult and hard and annoying. Yeah. So let's go to a more current comment and more general. Uh, so Sunrinder Singh asks, for audio and phone experience, which headphone would be the best? Uh, Jabra, AirPods Max, Bose 700, or Sony XM4? Uh, mm. Have you guys tested the AirPods Max yet, Sherlyn? Or Valentina? Yeah. yeah. I have haven't you, used have them. Have you, you tried them? them? No, I have not. Billy's the one who tested them for us. Yeah, yeah. Billy yeah. tested it. But I've, I've tried them for a bit. Don't, don't listen to Apple, everybody. You don't need to spend $600 on a pair of cans. If you want really nice headphones, I love the Sony XM series in general. So the XM4s would be fantastic. If you find the XM3s on sale, which I occasionally do, they, they sometimes go for like $200 to $250. Those are some of the best sounding headphones you'll ever find with great uh, noise canceling. So, what are you wearing Sony. now? Right now, again? These are these are the Steel Series Pro Wireless. These are okay. what I use on my PCs, just because it's nice to have some flexibility. But when I'm like writing or just like when I was traveling, like those Sony's, I lived and died by those things because they were a great way to drown out all the noise, watch movies, listen to music on a plane, like they'll last you forever so do that and if you want earbuds if you do want like just earbuds that aren't airpods and go for the jabras okay and then maybe getting towards some of the last comments uh albert aiden um i don't even oh hey hey sate <laughs> specifically what this was uh referring to but they said chonky bump TM, TM, TM. It's the Duo 2's camera. The Duo, yeah. yeah the duo they, twos anyone camera. who has listened to this show knows we've, we've marked <laughs> yes. the chunky um, scale. There's, yes, there's you know, every scale. I think every product designer also needs like a chunky scale. Like, is this is this bezel too chunky? Is this, is chonk, this camera honk, bump too chunk? Honk, unk, or k? Yo, <laughs> That's geez. it. Come or, on. Huh. Yeah. Or, not yeah. even there, bro. I don't know. You know um, what is the chunkiest boy? The chunkiest of the chunky? The chunkiest mm. boy is the iPad Pro Max. I, I, iPhone 13 Pro Max. iPhone Pro Max. Mm. I mean, yeah. chunky in terms of size, yeah. Heavy, heavy, so heavy, big. heavy. So I just big. measured all You're of them. Yes. Go to a, um, a Apple store just to feel just to how feel it. big it is. I've mm -hmm. talked to a lot of people who bought the Pro Max last year, and they're like, uh, never again. I'm not going to mm. live with this for another year. So... Wow. Listen to them, folks. Huge. Yeah. So Wilso has a really interesting uh, point of view. Hi, they Wilso. Said that on the AirPods Max, mm -hmm. uh, the noise cancellation makes them feel queasy. <laughs> oh, that the people. True. Some people yeah. say that. Yeah, where it blocks yeah. out the yeah the ear. They're supposed yeah. to. So they said they had like designed vents to avoid that because basically it's like air pressure, and yeah. by sealing out the outside world there's like this negative air pressure that's created by your earphones um and then supposedly the the airpods max were supposed to fix that so i don't think that's a fix for everybody and listen not everybody needs anc especially now if you don't need noise canceling get just put headphones over your ears and it kind of blocks out noise so you will be perfectly fine with that you don't need the like added pressure of anc it is a nice thing to have um like when i'm Sometimes if I'm out working in my backyard or something and like 
the, the suburbs are not quiet folks there is always leaf blowers there's always lawn mowers there's always like i have a neighbor who just like hacks <laughs> up coughing like every day all day outside um it's all he does he's there to torture me um it is nice to put on headphones and just block all that out okay so i think we're uh getting toward being done we still have a couple of things to talk about so we, valentina we, we can, if we have time we'll do a, a final q a yeah. yes if uh, we have time, one quick we'll question another... while we yes. have valentina sorry i see carl c has uh does the charge five have lift to wake hmm. it does um and i, I for i think because i'm like this is not a like a, a natural, <laughs> you know, like this is not the lift to wake movement that that people yeah, yeah. that people would do. It's more like this, in which case you can see right there, it it did turn on. Um, so it does have lift to wake, and it also has an optional always on display mode, um, that you can turn on, and it kind of when you're not looking at it, so when your wrist is turned down, um, it will have a kind of ambient lit sort of screen where you can still see uh like the time you know the the full watch face on it um so that does eat up battery life and um i've kind of used it for a little bit with always on mode on and then without so trying to compare the battery lives right now actually okay okay yeah and the only reason that i didn't shout that out is because i like right after that happened someone said that yes it does have lift to wake Oh, um, anyway. I just I just wanted to make sure we had something for Valentina to answer. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. So, okay, one last thing that maybe everyone can weigh in on. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, I think, a, another like step in a story that's been going on for a while, which is that the EU has proposed mandatory mm -hmm. USB-C on kinda, all devices. Let's do this as other news. How about that? Because I want to get this in okay. the show. I just saw that Okay, so in. yeah, we'll get this. Yes, we'll get this in other news. But chat, remember, we are going to talk about this. And we're probably going to talk about it, like, eh, might even talk about it in the next uh, five minutes or so. Very but soon. the important thing is, Valentina, you are free. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, yeah, stop no your local. Save your audio. Yeah. Yeah. Stop yes. your local recording. You can send it to me. Um, you know, any way that's comfortable. Could be Slack. Could be um, Google Drive. Whatever it is. Yep. No problem. Thanks, guys, for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks as always. Thanks for your Fun. time, hun. Talk to Bye, you later. Hi. All right. We're gonna wrap in. Uh, do you see this story, Sherlyn? I we saw it. I saw. I mean, I saw the chat. Uh, it's, yeah. Hello to the breaking news situation, y'all. Hello to the breaking news. I'm just going to send this link to Sherlyn so Sherlyn can look at it. Honestly, um, it doesn't seem like a bad idea to me. It's a great idea. It's a, we've actually we've talked about this a little bit, um, but it's all on Apple. It's uh, so annoying so, that like <laughs> somebody's like, "Oh yeah, I only have Android like mini USB charger." My God, um, like, what if I do you remember just go to anyone's house and charge your phone. Just charge your phone. Uh, I remember when Lightning launched. I'll save this for the show. I'll save this for the yeah. show because I, I have a little anecdote around. So all let's that put stuff. this up top. Then it is, but we have, so we basically already did other news with Valentina. So yes. I'm just going to do continuing other news, and that'll be above Facebook portals. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, folks, in other news, there's actually something breaking that's happening uh, as we are recording this. The European Commission has proposed uh, basically a requirement that all phone manufacturers mm -hmm. use USB-C charging, um, saying that it's hooray! major. Hooray! If it, this it's comes a, through. They're aiming to like uh, reduce e-waste and solve, con you know, solve a big problem for consumers because it's really inconvenient to have all these different things out there. Um, I this is a great idea. And I think we've even mentioned mm -hmm. something like this for a while. I've been waiting for the iPhone to go USB C. We've Jesus, seen yeah. some of the iPads are now. So kind of Apple is kind of slowly getting there. What do you think about this, Sherlyn, as our like mobile goddess right now? Oh my god. First of all, put that on wow. my tombstone. Mobile oh my god. goddess. I shouldn't even I shouldn't okay. even just like throw these titles out there. Because <laughs> that's all Sherlyn's gonna to focus me. on. <laughs> you can call me mobile chonkster. Um mobile chonk. I I <laughs> I love this. I have USB-C on everything now. My laptops, my phones, MacBook and, and Windows PCs both use USB-C power. Like it's insane that I still have to keep this one different device everywhere, a different cable everywhere I go just for the iPhones. So I I, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. the EU being the place to start for this is actually kind of also I guess expect it because they've also been ahead with GDPR and all that stuff. So I don't know. I feel like this yeah. 
like our article says, uh, may signal the end of lightning. And and you know what? I, please, good, please. Riddance. Good listen, riddance. Listen, folks. I, I think any any like hardcore iPhone user knows the fastest way to charge your phone is you got to get the USB C power adapter and you have to get the USB C cable yep. to lightning because it turns out USB C is a far better power delivery platform. Uh, yeah. Let I let lightning die. I actually remember yes. um, cool. when when Apple started moving towards lightning, when was that? It was like 2013, 2014 even. But when that was happening and away from like the old wide connector, which was just a pain and those things suck. Um, I was on like CNBC or something. I think it was on with like Lance Ulanov, who was mm -hmm. head of PC Mag at that point. We had this debate about it. Um, I do remember like him and a lot of other people were like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Apple has its own thing. Let them introduce lightning. And I was like, no, no, <laughs> USB-C exists. USB-C yes. is a, so good. it's a common standard and um, yeah. it's going to be easier for people to develop accessories and stuff for it rather than having this like really convoluted made for iPhone program where people yep. have to license lightning connections. Uh, none of that. The USB-C was I... same size better power but yeah go ahead no i was gonna say that i just think that even when and i think it's an when not an if i think when apple makes the switch to usb-c uh over lightning it will still do something that makes its version of usb-c a little different from the rest sure, for some reason sure. because it to. still wants to yes it still wants to make that proprietary thing happen uh and also a good point that was brought up in our chat um by i believe uh, Jonathan Anderson, not mm -hmm. all USB-Cs are equal. This is true. There's yes. USB-3, yes. USB-4, etc. So even then, there's some way to kind of differentiate between USBs. But at the very least, have mm -hmm. them be backwards it's the compatible. Same it's the same Yeah, plug. and it's the same That's cable. It. One cable will work. It's fine. One cable. It's not It's not perfect, as, as you're pointing out, especially for like mm -hmm. laptops, because some laptops, mm -hmm. like right now, I've been testing the XPS 15. That ships with like a 65-watt USB-C charger. If I plug in the MacBook Air's 30-watt yes. charger, it still charges, but it complains. It's like, hey, this is not enough yep. power. And that yep. stuff is not super consumer friendly. Um, but hey, that's that's annoying. Uh, I think even more annoying is like the Thunderbolt stuff because mm -hmm. it's like, it's USB-C plus it's Thunderbolt on top of that, but it's the same connector, but not all USB-C is Thunderbolt, but all Thunderbolt is USB-C. Um, it's all these big uh, companies. Like Intel's this, ruining that. Apple's yeah. ruining that. What's up? Yep. I sorry, the simple fact that I have one brick, <laughs> uh -huh. but like two USB cables, one with USB C in and lightning out, and then one with USB C in C out. Like, what? Like, come on. <laughs> like, wh why do I have to have what? this extra one? I just need, I don't want to pick. Just, anyway, just this one. is my frustration. Yeah. <laughs> I, right now, I have one of my favorite like portable laptop chargers. I think it's from Rav Power, uh, but it has like a couple USB A ports and several USB Cs, and it is it does like up to ninety watts of power, so like it can charge pretty much anything. It shouldn't be this way. It shouldn't have to be this way. It could mm -hmm, be a lot simpler mm -hmm. if everything was USB C. And I think because the iPads are getting there, um, we're going to see on the phones eventually. It yes, just make our lives easier. Ish, yes. yes. Anyway, it was it was serious hardware season this week. It was it, we're 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 no longer calling it Techtober, you guys. We're calling it Tech Fall. Tech Fall. So catchy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up with something. Okay, we'll we'll something. figure it out. Um, yep. But yeah, in addition to it being iPhone reviews week and Microsoft Surface event week, there was a whole bunch of other stuff. There was a new Kindle Paperwhite announced sure. uh, with some big updates, like some among the biggest updates uh, to Kindle Paperwhites in a while. Um, mm -hmm. And then we know there's a Nintendo event later today as of this recording. Um, don't know what we'll see. I think it's more of a game show because it's a Nintendo more Direct. Games. Yeah, we, we are I getting think... close to the Switch OLED launch, so there's going to yeah. be more stuff coming out of that for sure eventually. Yes, yes. And while we hate giving this company any airtime whatsoever, it is worth noting that Facebook has got a new portable portal smart display. Portal. Uh, portable a, portal. Two... Yeah. yeah, portable portal, portal. portal. So it's called a portal bow. bow. No, bow. it doesn't work. It, <laughs> bow bow is not a name. Portal, no, portal bull. You know, like portable, but portable. Okay. It does not okay. work. It does not work. It's anyway. Called the portal go. <laughs> It's called it's the Portal, portal Go. It's one ninety nine, like a Surface is, Go, two hundred dollars. It, yeah. It's funny that this is. Uh, they're still on this. Apparently, these devices have been successful, even though like nobody should trust Facebook with uh, with a video chat or anything. It is mm -hmm. funny that the center stage stuff from Apple is basically the same thing. 
where it uses software to like focus you uh, and follow you during a video yeah. call or something. So yeah, everyone's doing it. Um, I mean, Google does yeah. it too on the on the on its Nest Hub devices too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah, for sure. Um, uh, but we we should mention, and we didn't get to talk yes. about this last week, but the Wall Street Journal has had a really mm -hmm. good selection of uh, stories called the Facebook Files that. Mm has a lot of inside info. And if um, you hear us complaining about Facebook or if you hear me, I was on This Week in Tech this past weekend. Um, I feel like I went into full rant mode against <laughs> Facebook because of some of these things. But this company is terrible. This company stinks. And uh, they keep know. lying to us about what they do. So among these stories, right, they, they reveal that Facebook has very different rules about how it treats celebrities and elite users. They reveal that Facebook knows Instagram is toxic for many teen girls. Like it is directly contributing to um, bullying and also suicide rates. Um, they know they try to like um, fix the algorithm I believe at some point to like make it less contentious. And then they ended up making the algorithm worse yes. and meaner when all of a sudden store, you had to be negative in your stories to get like better lift in Facebook. Um, people try to flag drug cartels and human traffickers like working within the platform. And the company was like, uh, what do you want us to do about it? It's it, ah, everything. So annoying, frustrating. Everything I, I... they're doing. Yeah. I know personally in my real world social circles, I know at least three or four people that work for Facebook and mm -hmm, are all mm -hmm, dying same. to get out. They just same. hate it. It yep. is insane. It, the culture there seems toxic as hell. So mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. So we do hate Facebook for, that, for these reasons. It is toxic as shit doing mm -hmm. all the wrong things. But they made a new hardware thing, so I'm Ooh, just so we have saying. To, well, that's the thing. So when we talked about the the glasses, right? The Ray Ban, uh, uh, the stories. stories. Yeah, it's like you cannot separate the hardware that Facebook is producing. Yep. And I, hey, I like the Oculus Quest quite a bit too, but you can't separate this hardware from what Facebook is doing as a company. And in some ways, it seems like that's what the company wants to do. Like, there's a story this week now um, at the New York Times about Facebook saying like, we're, we're gonna just send more pro Facebook stories into the newsfeed. That's gonna solve our problem. You know, uh, oh, yeah, instead yeah, of yeah. like addressing the issues uh, that a lot of reporters have brought up using CrowdTangle data, CrowdTangle is a company they own, they split up the comp like split up the people working on CrowdTangle so it would be less useful as a, as a service. Um, just just everything, folks. Like I I don't know. This is why I'm worried about Facebook smart glasses. The toxic are still dump. Sitting here. It's a toxic right. dump, and also they build things and they kind of hurt society in a way. They don't care to fix it. Like that is the thing that really gets me. If they built a huge social network and they're like, oh, this got bigger than we assumed. Like I we we could not for have foreseen that if things would get here and yeah. actively work to fix it, I feel like I would feel a lot better about what Facebook is doing, but that generally what they're doing is being defensive and ignoring it. And there was news yesterday too about Facebook changing up their CTO. Uh, Andrew Bosworth what? is the new CTO or will be the new CTO of Facebook um, starting next year, I believe. And that is a clear sign. That is the guy behind Oculus. That is the guy behind the glasses. Actually like every hardware thing Facebook has done he is a part of like he is the big product guy so it almost seems like the future of facebook is uh yeah we're a metaverse company we're we're gonna look over here you know mm. at all this hardware and cool glasses and vr and that flaming pile of trash behind us the social network we're just gonna walk away from that we're just gonna like not even deal with it i i i want to say so in our chat there are two things i want to point out one is mm -hmm. uh sir holmes uh says hashtag delete facebook i have done that i i mean i got off of facebook ages ago i just couldn't deal with it anymore toxic as hell but mm -hmm. mark dell in our chat who's one of our regular audience members too says would all these facebook things make you consider moving away from instagram and honestly yeah <laughs> I want to. It's hard. We've talked about this before where it's really hard to quit Facebook's two biggest apps, in my opinion, Instagram and or WhatsApp. WhatsApp. Yeah. WhatsApp is the hardest one because it keeps me connected to my family and I can't yep. get my parents to go to another app. They just won't. They just can't. They just don't know how to do it because their friends are all there too on WhatsApp. So it's mm -hmm. it's reach around the world that Facebook has is, is huge. Mm -hmm. um, so no, as much as I want to quit things like and that, WhatsApp. That won't solve it. That won't solve it. Like it won't, yeah. It's like it's like the climate crisis, right? You can quit Facebook, you can protest it and do everything, and everybody should speak up about it. But mm -hmm. quitting it 
just like making sure you recycle and never produce any trash will not fix the bigger problem. The bigger problem is this is a company that built a a uh, monstrosity that they don't know what like, to deal with. Yeah. yeah, like if we all on mass completely 100% all quit Facebook, sure, I'm sure that's an impact to them, but if we yeah. th that's not going to happen. That's not feasible. The, the more the more uh, likely thing that will happen is some big organization or regulation or authority is going to have to enforce something. So or or investigate something. And and it's thankfully the journal is at least publishing investigative stories about the company. So that's a step in the right direction. There's yeah. more reporting around it. Um, people, I know people within Facebook are really frustrated too. And the company is facing more internal dissent. So, hey, mm -hmm. hey, mm -hmm. we, we've got a lot of stuff coming on. Hey, speaking of um, a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> what are you working on, Dominic? What am I working on? So much. Um, I have a review of the Dell's new XPS 15 coming up mm -hmm. soon. Uh, it will likely publish today uh, when we are mm -hmm. recording this. So the big difference is it's the same design as last year, which was a big redesign. Uh, mm -hmm. But this one has an OLED screen. And the OLED mm -hmm. screen is spectacular. I love a good screen. Uh, it's OLED. Yes. Um, 3.5K has Dolby Vision. It looks incredible. So it's not fully 4K. But still mm -hmm. looks really good. Like I played a bunch of like trailers and movies, uh, some content you'll see in our review from the movie Gemini Man, which everybody oh. hates, but I think is a really cool tech demo because okay. there are clips out there of it in 4K, 60 FPS, which it, with HDR. And mm -hmm. looking at it is just kind of unreal. Like go look at it on your phone or your computer. Yeah, spoke. yeah. Look at it's on YouTube. Like there's some chase sequences and stuff. It looks wild, uh, not as good as it does in the theater or as it did in the theater, but it still looks cool. Um, I'm really digging the XPS 15. I will eventually be checking out the new Sonos um, Beam soundbar as well. That is the one with uh, Dolby Atmos integration uh, that, I don't know, that should be getting here today. I hope, I hope yeah. it gets here today because I have to work Fingers on this review. Crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. So I'm going to be looking at that. I'm also going to be getting in the Sonos Arc to play with and just to really compare, does this like, is there a big difference when it comes to Atmos and things like that? So we will see how all that goes. Sherlyn, what, what are you not working on? How about that? Uh, I'm not working on me. I'm not working on, you know, yeah. I talked to my therapist and he was like, why yeah. is your priority your work? I don't know, girl. Anyway, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I am working on finishing up the iPhone Pro review, which will be up by the time <laughs> this podcast episode is on all the sound channels. Um, and then we have, a, like I said, tech fall, tech, to tech temp turbidity. Um mm -hmm. And basically, we've got more events coming up, right? Next week, we've got Amazon, I believe, on Wednesday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I probably don't have to work as hard on that as I have on Apple, Google, and Samsung. Mm -hmm. But speaking of Google, there's a search on event next week as well. We stop. will be covering that. Everybody stop. I know, y'all, companies, listen. Apple, there's rumors that Apple still has another event coming up, which is very mm -hmm. true, but it's probably going to happen because there's a lot of MacBooks. MacBooks. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then all the devices that got announced, uh, whether it's Microsoft, whether it's Apple's watch that we still haven't seen, uh, are going to be coming in at some point. So we're going to continue reviewing those. Uh, I just I'm just trying to catch a break at some point and, and maybe sleep a little bit someday uh, <laughs> and take care uh -huh. of me. Take care of you, uh, so, so please. That, yeah. <laughs> the gadgets can wait. Um, chat yes. room, tell tell Sherlyn to take care of herself, please. Never, never. It's too, it's too crazy. <laughs> Let's move on to our pop culture picks. What do you What do you got this week? I got nothing this week, so I went back into my archive and. <laughs> Um, for, for a period of time there, when I was able to take a break, I actually found, I think people on this podcast know in the past that I, um, don't really like animated shows, but I, like I said, discovered the beauty of cartoons a little bit. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. not just the adult animated things like Harley Quinn that I mentioned earlier too. It's also just all these Disney movies that I started watching, Moana, uh, that's self care. That is like you taking that care is of yourself. That is so watching. soothing. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's chill movies. Uh, I saw Frozen for the first time and Frozen oh, too. God. So, anyway, yeah. my recommendation though is one of the movies I love the most uh, that I watched uh, in the last, ever since I got Disney Plus, which was like almost a year ago now. Um, Monsters Inc. was a really good movie, but the reason I love Monsters Inc. was because of the baby girl. She, Boo, she's so cute. Mm -hmm. um, and I wanted more from that world. I just was like, oh my gosh, I need these cute baby sounds. And then I realized that they have extra content. And Disney Plus has a series called Monsters at Work. Now it's you're just, just watching kids shows. A you're full watching on kids, kids TV. show. 
Yeah, <laughs> but I love it. I would just play it on in the background. It soothes me. It puts me to sleep yeah, yeah. very nicely. It's very. It's got this like... nice message of being a, a team mm-hmm. and and you know caring for There's the There's something underdogs. really soothing it. about kids yeah. shows. I don't know if it's just like the hell of parenting, you know, and dealing with like an, a real life a little no. boo. Um, yeah. but watching a good kids show with my daughter, um, like Bluey yeah. is, is a good one. I can. I'll give you some kids shows for a self-soothing how about that and that is bluey which is a really chill show and really cool and love the characters but okay, also okay we just my my chill anime thing is like just go back and watch like st- a lot of like studio uh ghibli movies. ghibli oh ghibli yeah. yeah okay yeah yeah um, and that's like yeah like yeah. uh kiki's delivery service is yeah so chill like so i do enjoy the i do enjoy the pixar mm-hmm. stuff a lot so monsters at work on disney plus is my mm-hmm. recommendation this week if you want that sort of soft warm wrapping around your heart <laughs> really nice about, really nice what about you dev i think i wonder there's a lot to read into you about you regressing basically right now <laughs> for self-care Go read into it <laughs> but i'll i'll save that for another time i want to shout out star wars visions which is the new um animated and i don't know if you're gonna be into this Roland, but it's a new animated show um on disney plus it is sort of like um if you remember what the animatrix did with the matrix like they were side stories by major anime yes. studios at the time. Um, I, I love the anime matrix. I love the animatrix. I mm. also remember at that point being like, damn, it is really funny to see this come full circle because I spent most of the nineties being in this weird subculture that n- very few people knew about. Like there huh. was anime, there were anime shows on TV. There was actually Saturday anime on sci-fi yes. uh, channel, but in Asia, it too, was still, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. And he, you guys get it all. But in America, it was like still a very new up and coming thing. So mm-hmm. I had the only place I could really talk about anime was like on the internet with like random people. Um, from my part people, of the world, probably. From your part of the world. But no, across like the, the US and Canada too. Like we mm-hmm. all kind of banded together because it was this little subculture that wasn't really huge. Then the Matrix happened. And then we were like, oh, this is just Ghost in the Shell. This is every Hong Kong action movie. And then, like, those cultures, those, like, genres basically started to become mainstream. So the Animatrix was this great, like, coming full circle thing of anime looking Mm -hmm. at the Matrix, which itself was influenced by anime. Um, Mm -hmm. So the same is true for Star Wars Visions because... uh, Hey, guess what? Uh, George Lucas was heavily inspired by Kurosawa films for the original trilogy. Um like beat for beat like the hidden fortress is is star wars so seeing anime studios including big ones like uh, production ig and studio trigger um kind of in the star wars universe i think is completely wild to me um i've only Mm -hmm. seen a couple episodes so far but they're all like 15 20 minute uh vignettes of star wars stories so people have the force there are lightsabers and stuff and like the Mm -hmm. basics of star wars are there but they're usually it's like their own worlds um so it's like the first one is set in like almost like a feudal looking japan because it's set like set after the feudal jedi empire um which is something that's supposed to take place long before the film but it's very like it looks like a samurai movie you know it looks like very specifically mm. it's about a ronin going in and saving this village because that's what you do in every samurai movie or western it looks so cool. The animation's fantastic. And I think it's just a great use of the Star Wars world. Like, I think Star Wars is best when you're playing around with it and not when you're trying to figure out, like, who is whose granddaughter or something. Like, I, I don't care about that. I care about, like, the ideas in this world. So check right. out Star Wars Visions. It is definitely worth... Um, it's worth a watch. And I think it's a better like side story show than what if which is the other one that's happening with the, the mcu yeah some of those yeah. have been good and some of those have yeah. been I, I hate yeah. the animation i hate yep, i hate same. the way like the it style. looks mm-hmm. um the black panther one was good the black panther like okay. Gal, uh star lord one was good beyond mm-hmm. that um, not so much so anyway Agreed. check out star wars visions it is now on disney plus and uh, all the episodes are live so you can binge it whenever you want and i think you can wrap this show then. yep all right ben Okay. Well, that's it for the episode this week, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Elman. You can find Davindra online at 
at Devendra on Twitter and at the Filmcast podcast at the filmcast.com. If you want to send me recommendations for the cuddliest of kids' cartoons, I'm at Sherlyn Lowe on Twitter. Email us your thoughts at podcast at Engadget.com. Leave us a review on iTunes and subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Woo. All right. All right. We can I think we have maybe so a couple minutes. A, yeah. Yeah, we've got a... Uh, a uh poll in the chat pick sherlyn's new job title for 2022 or food i cannot be the editor. first person that's called you that mobile goddess i've got you're you're like there mobile. you're like you're like a bodhisattva right now because you're like every arm is just like a different device yep it, yep. Okay, with 17 mobile votes, snake. mobile queen and mobile goddess came in uh they were both uh yeah so 19 votes they both got oh Oh, people are still voting. They keep jumping. It's voting. amazing. All right, Jonathan it's Anderson's moving. asking for snack suggestions. They're coming. I saw someone else ask for the Engadget snack suggestions. They're coming. Calm down. Calm They're it. Coming. Oh, Hang yeah. On. So uh, I have a quick snack suggestion. It's not actually like it's not supposed to be a snack, but like pork sug or mm -hmm. sug, you know, like um, it's uh, basically um, cotton candy made of made out of pork. And mm -hmm. I love oh, it. We call it pork floss. Oh yeah, pork um, floss, whatever it is. Uh, like I oh, S U N G Ro Song. Okay, okay, song, excuse okay. Me. I get pork it. Song. I get it. Well, yeah. Sorry, okay. it's hard I, to uh, get the what you're saying have, when, when it's have, S U G in my head. You know. Well, what I mean? yes, I have crappy pronunciation too. So, <laughs> uh, but yes, pork floss, excellent, yeah, delicious. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, in, in, not really everything. supposed to be a snack though. It's like it's eating very French's dry. French fried onions. Yeah. I love it though. Oh, I eat French's fry, fried onions. I do it. Well, so yeah, that's but why you, that's supposed to be something that you put on bahu. top of things rather. Yeah. Than... Yes. It's meant to go on top of like uh, congee or or mm. like whatever else because it's sweet. It's a little sweet. Or or yeah. um, actually, the best way to eat it, Ben, if you ever get the chance to try this, is pork floss buns, um, oh. like a buttered oh. bun with the floss. Uh, Singapore had a. Like yeah, a chain mm -hmm. of bakeries called Bread Talk that like pioneered this and it's just so good, delicious. Look around, Ben. You you will find like actually Tasty. five minutes from me right now is a Korean bakery that has like oh yeah some of the best stuff I've oh. had. Oh yeah, I so, probably yeah. look around. Yeah, all I have to do is wander around. Uh, get red bean, get some red bean oh, buns, yeah. red, and get red some bean buns. buns. Already know yeah. that those are great. Custard, um, uh, liu sha, mm -hmm. which is like salted egg custard. Uh, anything, mm -hmm. anything with salted egg custard, do it. So uh, the thing that I really wanted to talk about is uh, user Calvin RR said, whatever happened to the Dune movie? Will it ever come out? Mm -hmm. It's coming, oh, it's coming oh in a boy. couple of weeks. Oh boy, what are you it's talking about? In a weeks. Yes, but I mean, it's uh, the global release schedule has also been so confusing because, yeah. okay, yeah, like whatever. It came out in Italy like it's uh, in a Europe. few weeks ago, yeah. but that is tech only technically because it was the Venice Film Festival. It's already out in places like Australia, France, yes. Or not Australia, yes. Austria, France, Norway. Uh, it's Spain. out in Europe it's, because they don't yeah, get the HBO Max stuff. So I feel like they, that was like a bone they threw to them, which was like, hey, guys, you're not going to be able to watch this at home, but you'll get it a little early. But the thing that really stuck with me is like, OK, the some of the early reviews, not going to really spoil anything, but some of the early reviews from both people who are really into the books mm -hmm. and have never read the books are totally split some people were like yes yep. this was captivating and this was like yep. the dullest thing ever and also a build-up to what to should a second be, half yes yeah. a much more interesting thing but the thing that i'm really stuck on is this is the first time in years maybe more than a decade that i've felt like a piece of science fiction culture some you know nerd culture was at risk of not being totally fulfilled because mm. the i mean i've seen a lot I, of bad superman movies so i don't know well yeah but the the idea is they're still going to be making more dc sure, movies sure. it's the feeling that i have right now is god this better make some money don't ruin so Dune. we can get the second half of it and yeah i haven't felt like that in so long i remember mm -hmm. seeing uh, uh, a a bunch of movies come out before um 
God, maybe I was like really rooting for Power Rangers movies when I was a kid or something. And I was like, damn, like I really hope that this Power this Rangers me, movie I need to, is I need to like bus. finish I need to finish reading Dune before this movie because I know a lot of people who are like super into it as well. So there are two um, reviews I would recommend everybody read if if people are on the side. Um Walter Cha, a film freak central, who's one of my favorite reviewers. We've had him on the film cast quite a bit. Um, and David Ehrlich, who's over at IndieWire. Walter loved it, David hated it. I think like just looking at their like impressions of those things um, is going to be really interesting. What's up, Sherlyn? Yeah, no, I just want to shout out quite a few things <laughs> in the chat. A lot of people bringing up very good points about Facebook in the chat. I'm sorry we can't get to all of them. We are uh, we running short on them. time. Um, but I, I wanted to say uh, Jonathan Anderson, who is the one who prompted the snack uh, conversation, recommended made good granola minis. And I love those. Those are freaking delicious. I recommend these um, guys. If you don't have time for breakfast, I'm talking to people like Sherlyn, if you need real food, the kind like breakfast bars are really good. Kind breakfast bars are also very good. I like their granola too. Um, mm -hmm. the, and then shout out Mark Del said one of their uh, tech leads went over to work for Facebook. So RIP and sorry about that. RIP. Um, there was a good question on the uh, current screen. I can't remember where it was, but I'm going to get to it. What's that? People, a lot of people are, are uh, uh, D-Man. There we go. D-Man uh, said, WhatsApp, your family's using WhatsApp because it backs up and it uh, works on all your phones well. May I may I introduce you to Telegram? Because um, uh, Telegram also does all of that and it works across it does, multiple but devices. All their friends are on WhatsApp and all their friends' friends so, are like, So that's if you're able thing. to... Yeah, that's well, yeah. It's, it's your, about the people on the network, I agree, but it's I'm just Charlene, saying that like... How are your parents supposed to get chain letters if... Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> They need to get their chain letters from their friends. That's the thing. It's the easy yeah. forwarding that makes WhatsApp like so addictive it's, to a lot of people. What it is, I it's about their other friends, yes. Their yeah. other friends. We need to spend some time talking about you and iMessage at some point because I think mm -hmm. you started to learn that uh, <laughs> there's a better great. world out there than Android messages iMessage is basically yeah. is really great because it's basically a good chat app like Telegram, but yeah. but with SMS, like with everyone who already has a phone can receive it. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, lots of good name suggestions for this tech season. Tech Techfology might be one of my favorites. Uh, and then Will so very kindly shared sympathy for for Techvember. We are going to be very busy. This is true. We appreciate your support. Ron Barbaza, I believe, uh, shouts out Pocket Now's podcast, which is how they discovered us and came uh over to the engadget right. podcast I like so pocket now. appreciate yeah. that yeah uh i believe it's jaime rivera that's on mm. pocket now i might not be remembering the correct publication with all my friends um there we go wow sherlyn has friends wow yeah yeah I, i'm a goddess apparently so that's you know you have godless friends goddess listen friends. i will come up with a new title for you every episode how about that because especially oh, as oh, we, we gotta throw sherlyn some bones between all these reviews and everything um true true yeah if i show up if i show up anyway exactly. i think that was it that i would want it and apparently the official title y'all all voted for is mobile goddess and there you go but that you can put in your twitter bio now it's official yeah there you go <laughs> there you go all right thanks uh, we gotta we gotta it. wrap yeah. yeah but thanks for joining us today do a whole bunch of other stuff thank yeah, you everybody you know, for joining us have to do a whole day's worth of work okay yep. so thank you everybody the stream comes to you via our video team who is Kyle Mock with Julia Barrientos and Luke Brooks. But it's powered by everyone in the chat. Again, it's just so much fun interacting with everyone in the chat because otherwise we'd make a podcast, we'd just chuck it out and we'd see some download numbers, but we don't often see like people interacting. So it's nice to have people interacting with real interacting mm -hmm. with us in real time. Send us emails. Yes. Emails are yes. good. Yes, send us emails if you want to have uh, some deeper discussions. Uh, that would be podcast at engadget.com and leave us some nice reviews on iTunes just because that's yeah. And that's all of you. Yes. J, J Mike, Kevin, R. R. Ruin, Dick, Sir Holmes, uh, 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 Dhruv Karmokar, just Ron Barbaza again. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Later folks.